Good evening. This is the open meeting on September 14th of the Arlington Street Development Board. It's been conducted remotely consistent with the Governor Baker's executive order March 12, 2020, due to the current state of the emergency. For this meeting, Arlington Redevelopment Board is convened by, convening by Zoom as posted on the town website. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. Um, uh, this is Ken Lau, Vice Chair. I'll uh, be confirming that all members and staff are present and can hear me. I apologize if I put your name a little bit, I'm sorry. Board members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Jean Benson. Here. David Watson. Here. Rachel uh, Zumeri. Here. Uh, Jenny uh, Wright. Here. And Erwin Zirkel. I'm here. And Rachel is um, not here yet, right? Katie is. Kat Catherine. Oh, sorry, uh, Katie. Katie's not here right now. All right, so I'm going to um, switch the meeting around a little bit and um, hold off and welcome Katie and the organization meeting and go to docket number 3631, uh, 40, 473 Mass Ave, the continuing hearing for the sign. So I'll open the meeting uh, with seven o'clock. Is, is, the, is the proponent ready to speak? Hello, Kim. This is Patricia Warden. It will not let me into the, your Zoom meeting um, because I'm unauthorized, apparently. Uh, this is a public, there are, these are public hearings. I would like if I could be on the Zoom video, et cetera. Uh, who's this? Patricia Warden. Um, Jenny, can you, um, I don't have control of anything right now. Can you uh, see if she get on the video? Thank you. I'll work on that if you can continue, please. Okay. Um, is the proponent ready to speak about the sign? Oh, am I supposed to say uh, something? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. We, um, we continue, sure. we continue this and um, we asked you to, um, well, actually, we want to look at your sign. Um, I actually went down and saw the, um, the sign. Um, Rachel, did you get a chance to look at it too? I did. I did. I, I did um, before the last meeting and then there were the photos that were included in the revised package. All right. Do you want to uh, speak a little bit about the, your resubmission and what you want to do again, briefly? Yeah, I think, uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So I think uh, I think in the first meeting, even I was kind of confused with the drawings, you know, because I think the new submission looks like what we have right now. You know, it looks like this massive banner with the name on it, you know, which is uh, what I want to do is I want to just reduce that whole thing you know and i think uh the drawings didn't kind of uh portray that thing properly because we didn't have that side view you know so now we've submitted the side view and if you look at the board itself which is only like you know it's the top part of it that's all i want to do i don't want to like you know because right now if you measure the sign the total square footage of the sign right now is 154 square feet, which is massive, you know? So we, it, even for us, it just looks too big now. So I think the new thing is the board right, right there, that one, you know, which is just three feet from the top, you know? So that's all the, the, the lettering will be just on that, on that, uh, on that whatever the background, I don't know what it's called. It's like an aluminum background just to cover all the concrete. And then the lettering actually will be much smaller than that. So, uh, uh, and then we have that awning that continues down, you know, because just to, you know, for the sun thing, the sun hits the windows. So the actual sign is going to be just the top part of it, which is uh, much, much, much smaller. So it basically looked say from uh, 154 square feet, what it is right now, 
we're going to mine this almost 100 square square feet. I, I think it's going to go down to like about 90 something minus. So it'd be like somewhere on the 60, 60 something square feet. So uh, now it makes sense to me too, because we didn't have the side view in that first meeting. Um, how long, I think how long is the sign? The, you mean the width? Yep. The width is, so we, the, the problem is on the, on the edges, uh, you know, the, the, you know, there's like all this concrete and there's some, I don't know why it's sticking out, you know. So uh, the backboard is just to cover that. I think it's about, it's about 21 or 22 feet across and, uh, and top to down is about three feet. Okay. Um, Rachel, you have any uh, comments? So, I mean, as presented, the sign is is larger than what's required in the signage bylaws. But from what I see from the photos that you included, and then assuming that the that the substrate, so the backer that you're putting proposing to put the sign against, is similar to your neighbor to the left as you look at the at the building, I think that there's some significant um, damage to the sign band area that would be exposed if we asked you to reduce the side of the of the size of the sign so um, while I think that the sign is is still too too big I think that again you've you've tried to reduce the size of the lettering um, and if we asked you to pull in the, the sides we'd expose that that the, the the building facade, which looks like it's it's um, deteriorated quite a quite a bit. So um, my request would be that we perhaps remove the curly cues at the at the edges and really just look at the actual um, signage itself. I do have a question about how this is actually lit because I, I can't tell from the, you know, I, I appreciate, first of all, that you gave us this section. This is exactly what we were looking for. My question is how this is lit. So are the letters themselves, is the light going to cast onto the panel behind it? Is the light behind the letters yeah, exactly. or is it from the front? It's so the back backer panel itself is not lit. You're going to light no. The letters themselves. Okay. Just the, the the letters are going to be backlit. So they'll glow forward. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. Those are my only clarification questions. Okay. Uh, David. Well, I'll I'll just um, come back to my uh, thought that we had the last time, which was. Um, What about moving the curly cues directly next to the letters instead of in the corner to kind of keep the integrity of the artwork, but but um, but narrow the visual impact of uh, of of the sign? Because I I do agree um, with Rachel that uh, it, it would definitely be uh, undesirable to pull in the backer panel and expose the the sign band in the condition that it's in. Um, so I'm just I'm just thinking about whether we can um, maybe help help them maintain the artistic integrity of 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 the work um, by not instead of eliminating the curly cues, just pulling them in right next to the wording. If if the proponent wanted to do that. Yeah, I, I'm fine with that. I think, I, you know, I actually kind of read, you know, kind of on my computer, I kind of brought it in and it looks pretty good, actually. I like that. I can do that. I, yeah, I, I don't know what the rest of you think about that idea. Okay, David, uh, you done? Uh, yeah, I didn't have any other comments. Gene? Okay. Yeah, I, I will start by saying I agree. This would be an unusual circumstance because the original sign band on the building seems to be in very bad condition. I don't think it would be in the public interest to have that shown if the sign was pulled in. On the other hand, 
I do think the sign is too big. And I know we're supposed to count the entire area of the sign, but what I would like to see is, is the wording and any other curly cues within the 40 square feet, which is the technical requirement, I think, for signs of this size. So you can have, in my idea, you could still have the entire length covered, but the area that says Esotron, Cochina, Mexicana, and, and whatever artwork would be within the 40 square feet, which I think is where Rachel was headed, but I just wanted to put it within the actual numerical um, parameters of the requirements. I think that's a brilliant idea. Anything else, that. Jean? No. Um, I, I have uh, only one major issue and I, I just want to see if, um, do you see where the sign ban and uh, canopy transitions? I was wondering if, if we go back to the elevation of before and after, um, if you can make that transition between the sign ban and the canopy align with the green stucco that used to be a very nice cornice, I think it will read much nicer all the way across and we carry a line across there. Um, you know, either deleting or bringing in the, the curly cues in or out. I, I can go either way of that, but if, if, if we just make that transition, so the sign will be a little smaller, uh, but you don't, you don't give a dimension. I just wanna make sure that it's aligned with that green uh, pilast, uh, green band that goes across. You following what I'm saying? Uh, Ken, are you talking to me? Yes. Uh, no, not quite. Uh, I, okay. I, I, I didn't get that far. Jenny, can you pull up the elevation? Ken, are you saying you want the the gold part of the sign to basically have the same height as the sign band on the building? Yeah. That, that green, there's a green band that goes around that used to be a cornice. If that can line up with that right there, and I don't mind the length going the full length because it hides all the stuff behind it. Yes, but now if you have that line sort of carrying across, it, it, I think I think uh, it'll make it look nicer. What do you guys think? Uh, which green band, Ken? The one on the left or the right photograph, the one on the left? Yes. Or the, the on top of that door on the left? Yeah. So that green band ends right there. After that, it's all concrete. I realize that. But yeah. what you, that's what you see. That's what you perceive from the street. Right. So but, I think, uh, you know, um, I'm not sure where you where where that band stops and starts right now on your section. It doesn't really make it clear. Is it above that uh, that transition between the brick or is it below or it's it's very hard to tell. I'm just saying, can we just align it there? So Ken, I'm not quite clear what you're saying. Are you saying that how high the sign is should be the same height as the green band? So. I think the proposed sign is 36 inches this way. Yes. Let's say that green band is 24 inches. Are you saying it should just be 24 inches so it lines up with the green band? Yes, and then, oh, then I'm okay. Yes, okay. and then I'm okay with the length of the of or the width of the, the sign band, you know, covering more because now it sort of lines up and it, it, uh, it adjusts it it it, uh, it um you know, it goes with the architecture. So if you look at the, the store on, on our left side, yep. um, it's, it's, we have a salon over there. And, it doesn't uh, do it. Yeah, it, it's kind of like, uh, you know, so the band will kind of like, it will align with us then, and it won't be aligned on the other side. So if you want to look at it from far in the whole building, uh, it'll be a little disproportionate, that's what I'm saying. I'm thinking, I don't know. But that, that green band ends right there. And right after that green band is where all the the depleted concrete starts, you know? The stucco, yes. 
Yeah, the stucco, the stucco, you know, that's I, I don't, I don't know the word for it. So, uh, um, but I, I think I know what you're saying right now, you know. If I put if I put the board just uh, as as say as a green whatever, then the lettering uh, on top to down with a, with a citron cocina mexicana will be a little smaller, you know. Yeah, and I don't think be. it'll be. Yeah, it won't be you know uh, visible to the older people, you know. So uh, that's. That's my thoughts. I don't know. I mean, it might look good across. Then the whole purpose of putting the the letters up there is I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. But you, you have know a that nice, you have a you have a very nice restaurant, and uh, I think Thank you. Um, recognition of, of where your restaurant is is you know not. I don't think that's that big of an issue right now. But right. I, I mean, I'm just curious right now what the other board members think. You know, I can be sw I can be uh, talked into a. Well, it took time, Ken. It took me nine years to do that. You know, <laughs> nobody knew us in the first three years. <laughs> well, you did a good job. Thank you, thank you. I mean, Especially you know, the new sidewalk is going. The lamps are there. Yeah. I just wanted to look pretty. That's all. Yeah. You know, that's, that's no, I like your little courtyard in back or, or to the side. It's nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You should uh, you should tell my wife that. Ken, I have I have no real preference about whether he shrinks. The, the the height of the sign or not. I don't know what Rachel or David think about that. I mean, I'm I'm looking. Um, I I just pulled it up in Street View, and I'm looking, and uh, the signs on the businesses to either side uh, aren't even close to aligning with the sign ban. Um, and our different shapes and sizes. So I'm, I'm not sure that it would really add much to align it, but I don't have a strong preference one way or the other, as long as we get the artwork on the sign within the allowable square footage of, of the sign. Uh, what do you think, Rachel? So right now the letters are 30 inches tall, which is, Tall. I mean, those are that's a that's still a, a large sign. So um, I I don't disagree with you, Ken. I think that if it was reduced slightly, that you'd still have a sign that was prominent enough to um, to be able to communicate at the scale that you that you want to. Um, and and you're right. I think proportionally, it would it would it would um, really work better with the with the building. I think that this also needs um, to go, Jenny, correct me if I'm wrong, to the historic commission as well. And I would, I would assume that that would be their preference as, as well to align architecturally with one of the elements of the um, existing building. So I, I, I think that that was a good suggestion. I'm persuaded by both of you. I would go along with that too, and keeping the lettering and design will make it a little easier to keep it within the 40 square feet. Yeah, I'm, I'm supportive of that. And then in the future, if, uh, if other businesses in the building change their signage, we can uh, get them uh, more aligned with, with the old sign band. Um. Are you okay with that, or um, you, you don't want to accept that? Because I think that's. I don't know. Um, um, I don't completely like it because I think, you know, it, this is where I'm coming from. I'm coming from, you know, um, you know, I have to be a little competitive in in the center too, you know, and uh, it's unfortunate for me that the sign laws changed last year, and. Uh, you know, just knowing the fact that everybody has their signs up and running, you know, I feel like, you know, I'll be at a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, well, you, you you have always the other option of keeping your canopy there and just replacing the yeah, canopy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I and can, then I can you just walk the away. And I can, you know, change the canopy and have the 154 square feet, you know, 
yep. and ha- have that massive thing. But I don't want that look, you know. I think it's too big. It's just too big, you know. And um, I-, I want it to look a little more elegant and uh, at the same time purposeful, as in like, you know, uh, the lettering has to be a certain size. And if I go with that side, the old band, I think I'm, I'm I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage over there. I'll I'll try to get as close to it maybe, but I think that's too small for the lettering yeah. because we have two lines. We have Asitron and we have the Casina Mexicana. If we go uh, with that whatever that height, I think the Casina Mexicana will just probably won't even be can noticeable. Make, can I make a suggestion then? Um, because yeah. I think if you reduce the the depth of your sign, you're going to get much closer to the maximum allowable signage. Um, so you could look at rather than stacking them, you know, keeping Asitron and then Cochina Mexicana next to next to the sign rather than stacking them, which would then allow you to. Um, to right. Re- so you, you're talking about one line. Potentially, I mean, I, I would look at it to see again. Does that fall within the the forty square feet that we that we've talked about? But I think right. that would allow you to maximize the height, but then again, stay within this the sign band, the original historic sign band of the building, um, right. and you'd probably be about the same size that you're showing now. It would just be, um, it would just be next to each other as opposed to 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 stacked. So right. So so then you know that then what happens is you know those little things on the sides, uh, Rachel. Those are kind of be like I feel like those are going to be like little misaligned. You know the the curlies on the left and the right. If I put a citron and uh, continue that line with you know Cosina uh, Mexicana right next to it to stay within the band, I I feel like that's going to be a little you know a little off. I think this is like more centered and you know. You know, the thing is, because of the backlit letters, uh, nothing, you know, probably will be noticeable after like six o'clock, you know, in in the dark. The only thing that will be prominent, I mean, uh, will be just the letters, you know, the backlit, you know. I don't think people even notice the sideband. And, you know, and then if you look at the building in the hall from, like, say, across the street, the left left side of the business is a completely different sign, you know, and it already is kind of dis, disproportionate right now, you know. So for me, I have a good feeling about this. You know, I'm asking for a little on the left and a little on the right, but I agree with Eugene. I'd like to bring those those curly things inside so that it looks much smaller. I'll, I can do that. I can put it right next to the acetron on the left and the right and just leave the blank and leave the side all blank because you're going to take the goosenecks out, you know? And uh, another thing will happen is also if I go along with the band, uh, Rachel, the green band, the awning becomes much bigger too, you know? Uh, and I don't, I don't have a problem with that. You don't have a problem, okay. So, um, well, I think, you know, I think we have a, uh, but uh, then it's going to look like the the original one, you know, the big awning, you know. So, uh, so why why am I even ch- putting the sign up? I can just change the banner on the old one, you know. Well, that's so, certainly your that's certainly your choice. I think everybody right. here on the board is, has 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 their feelings on this, and we made it clear to you. So um, you can you have your choices of either aligning it or right. just redoing your redoing your existing canopy. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I think we're I think we're all in agreement right now, unless someone disagrees with me. And um, if you want to submit this in as is right now, we can make the modifications uh, for an, for a vote. Or if you don't, we can propose postpone this for another vote uh, with no for another submittal. I'm not you know I'm I'm open to what you want to do, but we can either vote on it now with what uh, with what we want or hold off on it. Uh, it's not going to be a discussion going back and forth much more than this right now. Yeah. Do you want Can, to open up public comment? Sorry, David, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I, I kind of zoomed out a little bit 
and at what I was looking at. And, you know, I think on that block, um, there's really only two, only two of the shops have their signage in, in the area of the actual sign band. Um, and they're the ones at, at the, on, all the way on the left side of the building, the, the uh, music store and the, and the crystal store. But then Arlington Center's, Arlington Centered sign is not in the sign band. Punjab's sign is not aligned with the sign band. The salon is not aligned with the sign band. Um, so I, you know, I'm kind of torn between uh, thinking that we should uh, push the businesses that are not in the sign band uh, to to get aligned with it, and you know, wondering whether it's whether it's really the right thing to do because uh, three of the other stores are not aligned and who knows when or if they will ever change their signage and be before us for us to, to make that modification. So I'm, I'm a little bit torn on this one. All right, why don't I hold off on this for a minute and uh, Rachel, you're correct. Uh, why, don't we, why don't we open this up to a uh, public comment? Um, does it, Jenny, you're gonna have to uh, run this for me because I don't know who's raising their hands or who's uh, asking what on my on my screen here. So can you uh, see if anybody wants to make a public comment uh, and select them, please? I do not see anybody's hand raised or anybody asking to be unmuted to provide any comments. Going once. Twice, three times. Okay, I will end public comment then. Um, what do you guys want to do? Looking for a motion. So I'm just going to go. Um, actually, I I have right now the um, Google Maps pulled up the 3D view, and it. It actually looks, and it, again, I'm only looking at the hair salon to the to the left. It actually looks like at one point there was a sign band can that does drop below that that stone cornice, um, about the same height as what's being proposed. That's kind of trimmed out in wood. And again, I don't know if that was original or when that was when that was added um but it, it you know it does suggest to me that it, at some point there was a precedent for this this sign band being roughly 36 inches as he's showing it now that so it Rachel. basically there's, there's a little part at the bottom behind the the awning right now Yep. That is, that was an old sign at right. some point. Yeah. So that's not in the package, but I, I, you know, there, there's a piece missing from the salon in the Google Earth um, elevation, which which does show that, and it basically aligns with the top of the, the the keystone that's in the arch between, in the in the opening between the between the two retail spaces. So okay. what does that suggest to you, Rachel? So that would suggest to me that I would I would be supportive of keeping the 36 inches, but again, requiring that the actual signage itself be brought into the allowable, the, the any wording or artwork to be brought within the allowable square footage of of the signage. And again, that's just based on what I'm able to, to see from what looks like um, more of the original framed out sign band, which does look like it may have dropped below that line of, 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 of uh, stone or stucco that's between the brick courses. 
I mean, okay. I guess that's fine with me. I don't know why we have to live with the old sign ban. Okay, someone want to make a motion? Well, I'll I'll move to uh, approve uh, the application as submitted with the supplemental materials, uh, with the condition that. Uh, the artwork be entirely brought within the allowable square footage. I'll second that motion. Uh, okay, I'm going to do a roll call. Uh, Rachel? Could you actually, could you make your vote be about the docket number and the address, please? Oh, I'm just sorry. Uh, there you go. Thank you. I'm new at this, so I'm going to, okay. Um, I'm, try, I'm, I'm just trying to find it right now. It's 3631-473 Mass Ave. I'll add that to the motion. Okay. Great. Thank you, Gene. Welcome. Um, Rachel, how's your vote? Yes. David? Yes. Gene? Yes. I also vote yes. So congratulations. Fantastic. It's going to look good. Trust me. Yeah. It's gonna look good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. So you'll get, you'll, get some, you'll get something in the mail with the actual decision. All right, Eugene. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. I feel good. All Thank right. You. I'm gonna return. To, uh, uh, how are you doing, uh, Katie or Catherine? Hey, I'm good. Sorry, I was late. There are some technical difficulties here, but I'm delighted to be here and to uh, get to meet you all virtually. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm going to return back to uh, um, agenda uh, number one. We're welcoming uh, Kathleen Levine Einstein. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> uh, as a new board member. And um, with that, uh, I also like to go on and do an organization on uh, put a vote up for the next chair. Um, so that uh, we can make these meetings run a little better than what it has been. Um, so is there a motion for anybody who wants to uh, nominate anybody to be the next chair? Ken, do you want to be chair? You've been vice chair. If you do, I support that. It's up to you. Um, I would like to stay as vice chair and I'd like to nominate Rachel as the next chair, if that's possible, if the rest of you guys agree. You okay with that, Rachel? Uh, I'm okay with that. David? Uh, you have a different motion? You certainly no, can I, I mean, I have I have no objection to, to Rachel. I, I don't know whether anyone else wants to express interest. I'm, I'm happy to have Rachel do it. Uh, uh, Catherine, you're new to this, but I'm going to include you. Uh, say, uh, do you have an opinion? No, I, I'm happy to have Rachel be chair. Uh, okay, so um, does anybody want to second this? Second my nomination? I'll second. Okay, um, David, your vote? Yes. Uh, Catherine? Yes. Jean? Yes. I vote yes. And Rachel? Yes. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna hand the reins over to you, uh, Rachel. And do you mind uh, going to docket number three, uh, 3633, 15 uh, Mass Ave public hearing? And you can take over from there. And I'm gonna go back being the vice chair and just sit back. Great, thank you. Congratulations, Rachel. Thank you very much. Please bear with Hello, me. Hello, Madam Chair. Yes. Can I please be admitted to the Zoom video meeting? I um, was not admitted because I apparently am not an authorized person. To make this a public hearing, I should be able to be admitted. So could you please do that? So, Jenny, I, know, her, I know. There's no video to join her, her audio. So she's joining by phone. 
She's no, not I, joining. I would like to join by Zoom. I do not consider oh. joining by phone. Hey, well, access, if you, but I do. Miss, I would like Mrs. to make Warden? a statement on, on the phone if I can't get on Zoom. Uh, Miss, yes, Miss, Mrs. Yes. Warden, if if yes. you click on the link on the uh, ARB web page on the town website for the Zoom meeting, it brings you right to the meeting. There's no authorized or not authorized. Anyone can but, click on that. Well, I did click, click on the link that was sent to me by the town of Arlington. I clicked on that directly. Is that any different? That's the same link, but you'll need to log into Zoom and then it'll connect you to the meeting. It's a it's no. a setting it's a setting change in Zoom that I that is new. So how do I get into the Zoom meeting? Do I do it from the web page? You, you, uh, what David just told you about going to the agenda and clicking yes. on that on that link, it will bring you into the meeting. Even though it's the same apparent link, is that right? It's it's the it's link the that's apparent. in the meeting notice. Yes. Yeah, I have the meeting notice formally from the town of Arlington, but that is different. Is that what you're saying from the one on the web page? No, they're the same notice. And that's well, the I... same link that you need to click and get into to come into the meeting. There's nothing different. This, it's the same. I'm looking at the same notice. That so was if I posted. go into your web page, you can guarantee that I will be able to enter the meeting. Is that right? I will hope that you can join the meeting. Well, but if you're that's not certain that you use. If, if you're not certain, I will make the, my statement orally on the phone when you permit that. If you are sure to unmute me at some point, appropriate. You may for also. Public. You may. Rachel will call on people to make any statements during the public hearing, and yes, you'll be unmuted at that time. All right. If you're sure of that, I'll just stay on the phone at this point. That may be advised, but you can also try to log back in. Okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So we'll now uh, open the public hearing for special permit docket number 3633 to review the application for 1500 Mass Ave. Uh, this is, uh, the application is by 1500 Mass Ave LLC. And the applicant proposes to develop a new mixed use building with four residential units and one commercial unit in a B1 neighborhood office district. The opening of the special permit is to allow the board to review and approve the development under section 3.4 environmental design review. So, uh, Jenny, do you have anything that you wanted to say about this before we open this up to the applicant? Um, yes, thank you. Uh, first, I'll just refer the board to the memo that I prepared and point out a few items that I mentioned um, had been updated on the website, including a tree plan that had been reviewed and approved by the town's tree warden. Um, and also a good neighbor agreement that the, um, I believe the applicant had sent to a butters uh, per the town's bylaw. So those are two new items. Um, and that was going to be one of my main, one, one, two of my comments that I think are very important. One is circulation, which clearly needs to be addressed um, in this particular development that's proposed. And uh, the second big one is the tree plan. I think that um, the applicant needs to find a way to abide by that tree plan or come up with an alternative that would have to be approved by the town's tree warden. Because the tree plan shows a lot more trees needing to be planted than what we have in the submission. And so that will need to clearly be resolved. Um, those are my two, two I think, of the, the biggest issues that need to be discussed um, with regard to this application. And I believe that the applicant is prepared to talk about those matters as well as uh, provide the board with an overview of the project proposal. Thank you, Rachel. Great, thank you, Jenny. So do we have the applicant with us? Uh, I see attorney Anessi. We um, do, yes. Great. I am here and with me is Monte French uh, from the architectural team, Emily Driscoll with him, and Darren Danucci, who is the contractor developer. Uh, now, uh, I'm sure that you've read all read my submission, 
uh, my Exhibit A, Statement of Intent particularly, which gives a background as far as the property itself is concerned. Uh, the property uh, consists of, uh, the lot actually consists of 7,265 square feet. We started out with 6,400 6, square feet, but as we, after we closed on that 6,400 square feet, we discovered that there was a back lot of 391 square feet that a prior owner of back property had forgotten about, had conveyed property out, but had never conveyed that 391 square feet to out. So we negotiated with the owner of that property. Actually, it was an estate because the owner had died and we acquired title to that as well, which brings our lot up to 7,000 265 square feet. You've already heard that we are proposing a three-story uh, building, basically, for two-bedroom units. And I want to correct the record uh, uh, on a couple of points. Uh, we are not looking for retail space. We are looking for office space. And one of the reasons for that is that we think, and by the way, we're in a B1 zone. One of the reasons for that is that you have plenty of retail space as you go further down in an easterly direction on Mass Ave because you come into Arlington Heights. The properties surrounding our property, our site, basically consist of more commercial-like properties such as Mal's Auto Body, there's a car wash, there's a liquor store, uh, there's uh, uh, CVS, uh, there's Trader Joe's, uh, and again, commercial type properties. Uh, so we're proposing an office use at the property and not a retail use. In addition, uh, I mentioned in, in my argument with regard to the 25% reduction in parking that I'd be relying on uh, covered bicycle parking, uh, bicycle parking on site, and carpooling. Uh, well, we can't do carpooling. We don't have enough room on the site. I've spoken with my clients, uh, and we have agreed, uh, among ourselves at least at this point, that we would provide a shower in the commercial space, which would make uh, uh, the third prong in terms of the three prongs that you need under the Transportation Management Act. Uh, the, the other issue that will come up uh, will be surface water. We can't really get into, we've talked with the engineer on a very basic uh, basis, we can't really get into that until we get into the site and start digging at the site and see what we have at the site. So whatever we're gonna be doing in terms of the ARB, probably would have to be conditioned upon our satisfying the town engineer with respect to the surface water uh, aspect of the matter. Now, uh, I'm, we're coming in with a plan that we have prepared. And what we're suggesting to the members of the ARB is it's a very complicated site. If you look at the submission that I've given you, I think it's on uh, tab 13, there's a photograph uh, of the uh, uh, property. And basically uh, it shows the uh, significant uh, elevation uh, with respect to uh, uh, the uh, property in relation to uh, the property out back. If you look at that photograph, and Marty's gonna talk about all this, I'm just simply giving you an overview. If you look at the property out back, the elevation of the property uh, out back is way above what we're gonna be doing on our site. But that photograph gives you an idea about the difficulty that we have in developing the site. So we are looking for help from you members of the ARB. We're not coming in with a fait accompli. We're coming in with plans which are a progress in development at this point. And we're looking for your uh, input 
with respect to how you think we might be able to uh, deal with the site, the very difficult site, uh, in terms of uh, coming up with a proposal that makes sense. Now, it's, it's mixed use, it's in a B1 zone, mixed use does apply in a B1 zone. Uh, we are going to have uh, the, uh, the mixed use component because we're gonna have the office use uh, in addition to the residential use. And as you can see from our submission, uh, with respect to the dimensional forms, uh, we are uh, proposing uh, a, a decent uh, square feet for the office space. We are open to discussions about that. Uh, I believe the office space that we're proposing uh, essentially uh, uh, is uh, fairly substantial uh, given the, uh, the total square feet of the building. Uh, we are, uh, again, amenable to whatever the board might come up with in terms of suggestions as to how we might handle that office space. The office space on the dimensional form is misidentified as retail, it's really office. And that shows up as 1,145 square feet. The residential shows, shows up as 4,224.9 uh, square feet. But again, uh, we, we need the residential. There's no question about that. We have to have the, in order to make this project work, and I've been through this before with the members of the ARB, uh, people need to understand, not the members of the ARB, they understand, okay? But folks need to understand that if a project is going to work, it has to work not only for the town, but has to work economically for the developer as well. Now, I know that you folks were in receipt of a memo from town council uh, with respect to your obligations and responsibilities in interpreting the standards under design environmental review. Uh, and what he talked about in that memo uh, was the fact that you folks have the ability to grant relief, for example, uh, with respect to setbacks and with respect to open space. So if we come, uh, come up against issues where we are dealing with open space and dealing with setback issues, you do have the authority to deal with those issues, uh, which uh, uh, prior boards uh, may not have thought they had, but you do have that ability. Uh, in one of my prior hearings, I mentioned other uh, sections of uh, the Environmental uh, Design Review Bylaw, uh, where the language talks about uh, uh, the, uh, the ARB members being creative in terms of how they interpret the provisions of the bylaw. But again, I'm not coming to you and saying to you, this is a plan that we have to have. What I am saying to you is that we need the residential component to make the plans work. Now, Monte is gonna talk with you uh, about how the, uh, the, the uh, development would, would look uh, in terms of the plans that you have and the like. Monte, why don't you jump in right now and I may come back in later after you make your presentation. Monte? Hello. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Uh, so currently the plans that you are looking at, as Bob mentioned, show the commercial space on the first floor with entrances on each side of what would be the residential entry. Um, the building is positioned in the site to be 25 feet back from the front yard uh, edge. And that has to do a lot with setback requirements and open space requirements. Um, we also have um, bike storage, short-term bike storage out in the front yard. Um, so that, and then the circulation through the site is a one-way uh, vehicular traffic through the site. Um, so it enters one side and exits the other side and parking is in parallel along the edges. Uh, the site is gonna require that we create a, a deep cut. And as Bob mentioned, there'll be some investigation that needs to go on with that in terms of drainage and other things. Um, we've looked at a lot of different scenarios, but of course we have not 
gone in great detail uh, to a point that where we would want to hear what happens with this hearing before we move forward with anything. Um, the residential units up above are four units, all of the same size, two bed, uh, one bath units. Um, and then we also have the bike storage, long-term bike storage at the rear of the, the building, along with mechanical space and trash room is stored inside the building. And I know that before Jenny mentioned uh, the tree plan that was approved, that tree plan will be reflected in the plans. Uh, I think that what got approved by the warden was came after we had submitted these plans. We can of course update that plan to reflect whatever was approved and make sure that that coincides. Um, and then I think the other thing that Jenny mentioned was the circulation plan. So I guess um, if we could try and talk a little bit more about that what your concern was with that, Jenny? Uh, okay, before we get to that, uh, uh, Monte, uh, let's talk about uh, a couple of the challenges as far as the site itself is concerned. The difference in elevation between the site and the properties around it. We know we have uh, a two a building, uh, uh, apartment building on the left-hand side. We have a restaurant on the right-hand side. Uh, we have a residential building behind, but I'm given to understand that when our building is constructed to three levels, as we propose, that even with that, okay, that should not have a real significant impact on the property behind the building. Is that fair to say? In what aspect are you? Well, from the point of view of uh, shadowing, from the point of view of uh, blocking sunlight, from that point of view. Absolutely not. Uh, the, the sight lines, because our building, even the roof of it is substantially lower than the building to the rear of us, um, doesn't affect sight lines or shadow or any, any sort of obstruction in that, in that regard. Yeah. I'd like to chime in on that point. Uh, my name is Andreas Kellis. I'm the owner of the property directly behind the building at 15 Woodbury Street. Uh, Jenny, is that a time for that? I can ask you to hold your comments for the public comment period. We will absolutely make sure that your um, opinion and, and um, what you'd like to share is heard. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, you were saying, Monte? Yeah, uh, just to reiterate that the height of our building is substantially lower than the height of the building to the rear, the house to, to the rear. Um, so it doesn't have any sort of shadow uh, obstruction or sightline obstruction. And how about the apartment buildings to the left-hand side of the property, uh, at Monte, in terms of their height uh, as compared with the height of our proposed building? That, that building is higher than our building uh, just by virtue of grade they have an uphill grade into their parking lot. And then of course their building is higher. Um, so of course we don't cast shadow on their building. Our footprint is pretty small. Uh, now I've noticed in looking at the plans and discussing the plans with you Monte, that we have a 25 foot setback from Mass Ave, from the sidewalk. Uh, is that because we want to uh, introduce uh, more greenery to the site? Yeah, I, that, that was in an effort to achieve the open space requirement. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And are there any other uh, aspects of the proposed construction that uh, you want to comment on, Monte? Uh, some of the other uh, things that we went through and I think are in the package are we did locate the signage that uh, would be on the site and sized it according to the regulations. Um, I think that a lot of the things that we addressed in here in this package, we're trying to get at the ordinance and make sure that we meet the spirit of the ordinance. Okay. We're going to have traffic one way. Is that correct? Uh, in and out? Yeah. As I mentioned before, the traffic enters in one side and exits the other side and all parking is in parallel. Okay. And how about parking? Where's the parking going to be on the site? 
it's in parallel to the drive lane along the sides uh, of the drive lane. On and the how side, many parking spaces one, on the side. Uh, five. Okay. So there's two on one side and three along the rear. All right. Okay. And uh, we need a total of how many parking spaces? Six. Correct. Six. Correct. All right. So we'll be asking for. Uh, relief from the members of the ARB uh, with respect to one parking space. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to add with respect to the plans before uh, we hear from the members of the ARB with, re uh, with respect to their comments? And I do want to get into the uh, circulation issue that Jenny raised in her summary as, uh, as well. I think that's pretty important at this point. Uh, but is there anything else you want to raise before that happens? Uh, not at this time. All right. That's what I'd like to say at this point. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll open it up to members of the ARB for comments. Uh, Ken, would you like to start us off? Sure. Uh, uh, Monty and uh, Robert, thank you for. Um, a fairly complete uh, presentation. It's been a long time since we've seen something this complete. And um, I'm very supportive of the project, but I have several issues I need to talk to you about. Okay. Uh, one is uh, the program which you have right now. You have a uh, ground floor uh, office with uh, four, uh, four units above on the second and third floor. Uh, and that's four units. According to uh, state code, once you go over three units and um, you need to get uh, um, a handicap access, unless I am wrong with that. Do you, you find an exception to that, Monty, that I don't know about? No, uh, that is something that we can address either through um, adding a, a an accessible unit on the ground floor, take part of the commercial space and create an accessible unit. Uh, I think part of what we looked at in the beginning and discussing this was that there is some precedent for other projects that have been completed in Arlington that don't have this and that it is something that you can go to the uh, ADA board and ask, and ask for relief. Um, but if you prefer that we don't do that, we can certainly add an accessible unit on the gra ground floor to achieve that. Okay, so that's, I would prefer adding another unit um, on the ground floor. I'm not sure what my other board members think about that, just so we have a handicapped unit on the ground floor. Um, and then the other thing is, <clears throat> since you only have one means of egress, a stairway there, I'm assuming the building is sprinkler, uh, sprinklered. Um, are you using that exception in the cold for that? You don't seem to show a sprinkle room anywhere in the plans. Well, we, yes, the building will need to be sprinklered. Uh, and of course we haven't gone that deep into the plans yet because we wanted to get through this process, but we have dedicated a utility room and some back of the house space where things will need to be located. Um, you know, if, once we get into the coordination process with engineers and such, uh, we'll certainly locate those items. Um, I, in the past, I found that you might have better luck with the fire department if you put it off in the bottom of the stairs. Um, so when you first come in, um, you, you right now you have a choice of just going up. But if you put it on, on a couple of steps going down and, and tuck the, the water room right um, below the landing and underneath there, you might be better off. But it changes the architecture a little bit. That's why I, I'm, I'm saying this. Instead of having a, a, a public access in the back for the firemen, it's actually in the front. So that might change the way you look at the, how you design this building. Yeah, it's a great idea. We actually on the upper floors have, if you see, look at the upper floors, we have a shaft. Yes, I see that. That is adjacent to the stairwell that we can easily use that to get up into the upper floors. Okay, well, with that said, uh, that issue there. And then my other issue is um, your tube cur cuts. Is there a, is, when you guys laid this out, was there a way of combining these curb cuts so you only have one way into the site? It's a very small site. 
and it's 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 fairly close to the corner of this uh, of of Mass Ave here. And if you can move the the driveway, combine it away from the the restaurant, and then not have a curb cut there and move the building over a little more, I'd be supportive of that too. But I want to hear what you guys, why you guys decided to go the way you, you went. I think it just has to do with the logistics of trying to get parking and vehicular circulation. And, you know, I think the thing that gets in the way is um, being able to maneuver on a site that has two way access on one curb cut. Sometimes that is what creates the issue when you have one way circulation through the site and parallel parking. There's very little need for man, uh, maneuvering of parking. Yeah, that's this. So I, I think it'd be better if we only had one curb cut and having that curb cut that's closest to the corner be eliminated and, and, and getting more space in the back for you. I would only, only suggest that moving the building forward. Right now you have 25 feet, it's set back 25 feet. Uh, the board has um, the ability to uh, give you some relief on that and not have 25 feet set back for the building and pull it forward some more it would actually give a better shot of, uh, of the office space. They're having more life. I mean, you're tucking at 25 feet back and it's, it's, it's also behind another four foot um, uh, shadowed uh, canopy there, or uh, what do you call that paved area, the loggia. I mean, that's, 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 that's not very welcoming. It's not, uh, I don't see very many people public want to go there. I think if we want to really stress mixed use we should get it closer to the street closer to the uh, to the sidewalk and activate the sidewalk is what we're trying to do along mass ave that's one of the plans and i'm not sure what the other board members think but i'm okay with waving that 25 feet uh for green space and getting a little shallower i'm not saying the square footage change it's just the dimensional change and bringing the building closer to the uh, to the sidewalk uh, I'll, I'll listen to what my other uh, board members think, but I think that pulling the building closer will give you more room in the back for maneuvering, getting uh, the curb cut uh, away from the corner, having um, having not get rid of the one way and just have a two way access. Because we're only talking a few cars here. It's not like uh, it's a supermarket or anything. It's not that much traffic that's going down this driveway. Um, I think uh, we should look at that a little bit more. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Um, I really like what you've done with the outside of the building. I think it looks nice. It's, it's a good relief that, um, you know, an architect has looked at this and actually drew something up that looks, that fits in the neighborhood. I'm done, Rachel. Great. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Jean? Thank you. Um, I'm just making a note. I have lots of questions. A couple for Bob initially, Bob. Yes. Um, I was a little bit confused about um, the square footage of the lot because as I saw it, the main lot was 6,400 square feet, 3,200, 3,200. That at one time was combined to 6,400. And that's what the property cards show. And then there's you just purchased the little sliver in back, which is 391. And my math adds that up to 6,791, not 7,265. So can you explain why yes. I'm wrong and why you're right? On yeah, the I can. We have a survey plan. We actually had the property surveyed. And when the surveyor went out there and surveyed the property, and we have a deed, by the way, uh, with respect to the initial survey, with respect to the 6,400 square feet, uh, we then, uh, 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 we had the surveyor go out there again, uh, once we acquired the extra land, okay? Uh, and if you look at, you, you, I think you have the survey plan there, I believe. Uh, it was hard to read, it was very fuzzy. I couldn't yeah, make that end small, of the writing. Actually. Yeah, but we do know it does come out to what the survey plan does show, okay? 
And the survey uh, plan uh, does show uh, that we have the 7,000, I don't have it, I can't see it myself at this point, but it's set forth on the dimensional form, okay? Uh, the 7,000... 265. Find it here. Uh, Monty, do you have it? It's 7,265. Yeah. Plus or minus. So we have a survey that shows that. I, well, I couldn't read the one plot plan because all of the lettering was pretty fuzzy. Right. So I think if you could submit a clearer copy. We will do that. To Absolutely. Planning and Boston Survey, a very reputable company did the survey. So we're relying on that. All right, that would be a second. Second is about the gross floor area of the first floor of the building. Um, your numbers came out different than mine. You came out 1,287.8. But when I did the math, which was um, 32 by 48, I came out with 1,536. So can you explain the discrepancy in the gross square footage on the first floor? Monte, can you address that? Um, the gross square footage of the first floor, it, I'd have to go back and look at it. Um, Gene, I can probably get you information after this. Um, I think we excluded the rear spaces such as uh, trash and utility. You can't, you can't do that. The code requires it to be from wall to wall on all four sides. So your um, submission says 1,289. 0.8 on the first floor. But if you do the math, um, which is um, 32 by 48, you come up with 1536. So I'd like you to take a look at that. Okay, and not exclude trash or- Well, take a look at the definition in, in the zoning bylaw of gross floor area, please. We will do that, Mr. Benson. Thank you. Um, Next question um, I have is about um, the parking. As I looked at it, and maybe it's a little bit hard for me to envision it, when the cars pull in parallel, they're gonna be against concrete walls. So it's unclear to me how the right side doors will be opening Unless the car, unless I'm misunderstanding what's going on there, or the cars are going to be more out into the driveway. So, can you talk a little bit about the ability to park those cars not in the driveway and be able to open the right side doors? Monte? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have to take a look at it. I mean, we did size the spaces according to uh, the space requirements. Um, the logistics of door opening and things like that, I think are things that we'll have to drill down into. And if we need to nudge things here and there, we can. Um, I think it's probably no different than a parking lot where you have cars parallel to each other and trying to get a door open next to another car. Uh, but we can certainly uh, take a much closer look at that. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. I couldn't quite um, understand that. Okay. Um, Next, about um, the parking and the uh, transportation demand management plan. I have a very different understanding than you've described, Bob, and I can't understand how a shower in the commercial space will meet that because the parking is for the residents. The parking's not required for the commercial space. The parking's required for the residents. So to have a shower in the commercial space doesn't really help toward that. Similarly, you're required to have uh, bicycle parking anyhow. So bicycle parking doesn't really help um, toward it either. So I don't really see how you're gonna come up with a, a traffic, de a transportation demand management plan for the residents um, of the building, what you have is five parking spaces that the owner is going to have to allocate to four two-bedroom units. And 
I think there are a lot of ways to do that. I don't think a transportation demand management plan gets you there at all. Um, similarly to some of the other things that you had mentioned in the narrative about other people using those parking spaces, like people who came to the building or, or other things, those spaces are required because of the number of um, residential units in the building. So they have to be reserved for, as I see it, for those residential units. So we do have one way, and I would like um, my colleagues on the board to consider this. We do have one way that gives us authority to reduce the number of parking spaces that doesn't require a transportation demand management plan, and that's if there's an affordable unit in the building. And so I think one possibility to get one fewer space, five rather than six, is to have an affordable unit in the building. Um, I Can I comment on that, Jane? Yes, please, I'll stop to you. Uh, I don't think we can do an affordable unit economically to have it make sense. We are uh, going to very seriously consider a kin suggestion uh, with respect to an accessible unit. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, uh, we need to have the four two, two bedrooms, okay, to make this site work for us in terms of what we have to put into it. We're going to have site costs that are going to be very significant because of what you've seen from the photograph and what you can see from the plans, okay? So uh, I don't really believe that we can do an affordable unit. Uh, I do think we can do an accessible unit. Uh, and we may have to do something with that office unit on the first floor. Uh, uh, and perhaps we carve out of that office unit on the first floor, a studio or a one bedroom instead of a two bedroom, uh, which again, we don't, we would prefer not to do, but we would do that if, if uh, that was something we had to do, okay? Uh, so uh, I think that's something we can certainly look at, but I just don't want to create the impression that we can do an affordable unit here. I don't think the numbers and Darren Danucci, the, de uh, the developer, uh, is on this uh, session and he can jump in if he wants to, but I just don't think that doing an affordable unit would allow us to do this development the way we'd like to do it. Well, it's um, one way for you to get uh, approval for five rather than six parking spaces. Let me just say something about putting a unit on the first floor. I'm concerned that the amount of, well, you say retail and- in No, your, it's not retail, it's gonna be office. I understand that you said that. And in your narrative, you said that we had suggested retail, which is obviously incorrect. But I don't know that that's enough space to be viable. And I'd be very interested in seeing some sort of market analysis that shows that 974.8 square feet of office space is going to be rentable in, in Arlington. I'm just Gee. concerned. I'm just concerned that you're going to end up with vacant space on the first floor and the apartments above. So I'm very interested in seeing a market analysis that the space actually can be rented out. I had an office as a lawyer in East Arlington for many, many years, Gene, with much less than that in terms of square feet. And somehow I survived and somehow I attracted clients. So okay. but I'm well, happy to look at I'll, it. We will look at it. Thank we will you. look at it. Um, next thing have next thing is the balconies. So under 5.3.9 of the zoning bylaw, projections into minimum yards. On the left side, the balcony, which is approximately um, 43 square feet 
would be projecting too much into the left side yard on both of the balconies. So I'd like you to take a look at that yep, and um, see what can be done about that, Yep. if anything. Um, I, I'd like to just add to what um, uh, Jennifer Rake said, the, the obligation that was made to the uh, tree warden was eight trees. I think it was at least two and a half caliper that were native that would grow to at least 50 feet. So um, I agree that unless you can get some relief from the tree warden, um, we would need to see a proposal that incorporates the promise that the developer made to the tree warden when he took down the other trees. We can do that as well. Uh, um, we, you know, we, we understand, Gene, that uh, whatever we're going to do, uh, a condition subsequent to uh, what happens here is going to be what you folks suggest we do in terms of uh, trees, in terms of uh, greenery, in terms of things of that nature. And that's the reason I said at the opening that we're here uh, for your advice, your suggestions in terms of what we might be able to do to make this site a viable site. We need to keep in mind that there was a dilapidated building on that site uh, and that we are, we are certainly improving uh, the appearance of what was uh, what is going to be on that site at this point. But again, we need to work within the confines of the bylaw and work within the confines of the authority you folks have on the ARB. And, and I agree with uh, uh, Kim Lau about thinking about pulling the building a little bit closer to the street. The setback under the bylaw is 20 feet, not 25. So I think at a minimum, you might think about pulling the building five feet closer um, to the front lot line and figure out what that would do with your open space. So I haven't um, yeah. done yeah, those we'd have calculations. To, we'd have to look at that in conjunction right. with the memo of Doug Heim, where he talks about the fact that you folks on the ARB do have the ability to basically modify uh, the setbacks, okay? But we'll look at that as well, Gene. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. the starting point for me, Bob, before I modify is to understand why you can't deal with the existing setbacks. Right. We're, we're, we're gonna note, take note of all your suggestions at this point. Um, so the retail or commercial space is listed as 974.8, but I think you said something over a thousand. Can you explain the discrepancy? Again, I'd have to defer to Monte on that. Yeah, I, again, I think that this is something where we have to get in and, you know, I, I know that there's things that have been submitted at different points in time. So maybe we need to catch up with, um, this might be an, a slightly outdated plan. Um, okay. There, there was talk about a retaining wall in back, step back 18 foot wall. I, I didn't see any drawing of that or representation of what that would look like. Can you explain? Yeah, I mean, that, that is an ongoing uh, exploration. Uh, we have been communicating with the rear butter and other engineers as to what we need to do. Uh, we haven't, again, we've been waiting for this meeting to be able to get into it fully, but there will need to be a retaining wall system there and we will have to work with the abutters to do it. Yeah, I noticed that the retaining wall in back, and you can see it in one of your photos, and I was out taking a look today, has some trees that probably longtime volunteers growing on top. And it, my guess is that the roots of the larger of the three or four trees there have cracked on the retaining wall already. So I do think you're gonna have to come up with something on the back. On the left side, there are trees that are on right next to the retaining wall. And I wondered if you intended to do anything with that wall, because if you did, you're probably going to undermine the trees on the left side. Yeah, we'll certainly need to look at that. I'm, that is a situation always when you have trees that are either right on or very near property lines and kind of mitigating that situation. 
So when I went and looked at the site today, it was clear that the site grades up. So from Mass Ave, it goes uphill toward the back and you didn't provide ele any elevations, things like that, indicating what you would do, whether you're gonna take out um, enough soil on the site so it would be flat and, or whether it's gonna to continue to grade uphill. Can you talk a little bit about what- Darren, you are you on? Darren? Hello? I guess he's not there. All right. Monte, it, can you address that? If not- Yeah, so um, yes. Um, this particular image is a good image to show. Um, it is being cut through. The, mm -hmm. the site will be cut back and down um, to be virtually level. I mean, we'll have to have some slope for drainage. Uh, and then across the back and the sides, we'll have to have a retaining system. Um, it's been discussed as being either a modular block system or a system that is um, more of a, a kind of a concrete molded method. Um, there's a couple different methods, but again, uh, we haven't been able to get into the technicalities of that until we get through this process. Okay, I but think more images on the presentation that show sections through this. So for... Mm, but your intention is that it will be pretty much level with Mass Ave, maybe very slightly going up. Correct. Okay. Um, so if, that's the... Oh, the rear, sorry for interrupting. Jenny, can you go to the other edge of that page, no, the previous page, and go, yeah, you can see how just to the right of the old building, there's a stone, a stone retaining wall, and it's significantly higher than Mass Ave at that point. So your intention is to basically take that down, I understand. Yeah, which retaining wall? The, the one to the right of the driveway in the old building, the photo that's on the screen. Okay. Um, I think the one that's to the right at, in the rear or on the side? No, in front. This is a good oh. photo to show. Yeah, some of that will need to come down, yes. Yeah, so this is also a good photo because there's a, a gas pipeline vent over there and this doesn't this is at an angle that doesn't quite show it, but it's really a little bit closer to the right. And it looked to me like it would either be within the driveway you're proposing or very close to it. And I wondered if you had taken that into consideration if you talked to the gas company about, about it. No, I, 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 we certainly haven't gone down that road again. That, that is an issue, Gene, that I did discuss with the developer, and we'll get back on that, okay? There, there are ongoing discussions on that, uh, as a matter of fact. Okay, because, yeah, something I think is going to have to, is going to need to be done about that. Are the, are the, um, the air handling system, et cetera, going to be on the roof of the building? Because you don't show that. Uh, most likely, yes. So I think an issue I would be interested in is how you're going to be screening, not only from Mass Ave, but also from the side and the back abutters. So obviously something you're going to have to deal with. I just wanted to ask about that now. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I'm just curious whether you intend to have uh, a laundry in the building anywhere or individual laundries in each of the apartments. Most likely we'll have laundry in the units, yes. Okay. Okay, I think that's it for now, thank you. Thank you, Jean. Uh, David? Thanks, Rachel. Um, my colleagues have highlighted um, most of the issues that uh, have caught my attention. So um, I, I've got at least one question I don't think has been asked. And then I just want to reiterate some things that I think are particularly important to continue to look at. Um, 
I didn't see any indication of whether there's an intention to have any mechanical systems on the roof. Marte? Yeah, I, again, the, the, the mechanical systems haven't been designed yet. Um, more than likely, they'll need to be a, com, a condenser somewhere. Uh, but I think the intention would be to have many splits in the units. Um, so no big air handler or anything like that up on the roof. Okay. And my reason for asking is um, I, I don't have a really good sense um, of how this building will relate to uh, the uh, abutter to the rear. And I, I, I understand that there needs to be a substantial retaining structure back there. Um, but um, at some point in the process, and perhaps we're not there yet, but um, but soon I would like to see some kind of an elevation that gives us a better idea of both what that retaining structure is going to look like and exactly how uh, this proposed building would relate to the existing abutting building. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Watkins, the elevations that uh, we come up with will also show you the surrounding buildings, our building, in relation to the surrounding buildings. We'll have that Thank for you. you. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and, uh, you know, that will also help understand to the extent there are any mechanical systems on the roof, uh, how that might impact the abutters, uh, given the substantial difference in, in grade uh, between those lots. Um, I uh, am also, uh, as others have mentioned, concerned about the tree plan. And uh, right now, uh, you know, barring any relief that you might seek from the tree warden, um, we're going to need to see a landscape plan that complies with, with the tree plan. Um, and we'll have there, there was, uh, you know, I, re I recognize that the property, the, uh, the old property was, uh, was not well maintained and the landscaping there was, was not well maintained, but it was a mature tree canopy. And uh, I uh, uh, regret that that has been removed and, and would like to see it replaced to the extent possible. Um, with respect to the circulation, uh, I share uh, the concern that uh, it's it's very tight, as as shown on the plan. I'm actually a little bit concerned uh, that it's so tight that uh, turning radius at the back around the corners of the building might be an issue, depending on the size of the vehicle. Uh, so. Uh, I, I think we need to look much more carefully at that and perhaps Kin's suggestion of, of consolidating the two curb cuts in, into a single uh, entrance and exit um, might, might help you alleviate that problem, as well as uh, thinking about what Gene suggested, uh, which is pulling the building forward. Uh, although, of course, we, we don't know off the top of our heads what that would do to your open space calculation. Um, yeah, that if I could, um, it would violate the open space requirement. Uh, the position of the building right now is in an effort to achieve the open space. Um, so if we did move it forward and also off to the left so that we can get uh, a two car width uh, curb cut on one side that would violate setbacks on the side side wall or side yard and also at the front and also violate the um, open space to some degree because if we were trying to get parking in the rear with both access on the in uh, access into the site and out of the site on the side of the building along with the parking at the rear and maneuvering space we would lose the ability to have open space Okay, I mean, I think uh, we'd like to 
have you explore some some ideas and if we see uh what impact alternatives might have on the open space that would allow us to make a decision as to whether granting some form of relief might be appropriate in this case um, okay you know, Certainly. I think the ultimate goal here is is to have the best the best project uh, that uh, that we can, and um, you know we we try to be uh, we try to be um, flexible where we can be to accomplish that. Um, so. Let me think. Anything else that hasn't really been covered? Um, it, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. If if I could, um, so I think I just want to make sure that we really take a good look at this with all the comments. There's a lot of great comments here. Um, if we look at moving the building forward and over to one side so that we can get a double curb cut, I think you know by my understanding, if we have a 10 foot side yard set back to on the left side here, as we look at this plan and we shift everything over, I think it does allow us to get two cars in and out along one side away from the restaurant side. And then the question is gonna be how far forward we can move the building to be able to get parking in the rear along with maneuvering. And typically for parking depth and maneuvering depth, you need about 40 feet. So if we have a double drive lane of 24 feet and then 20 feet depth of parking, I think we can get some of this open space, but I, I know that we've looked at this in the past and there, it might be a little bit under. So I'm, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, what are the trigger points for you guys or things that you don't think that you would be willing to kind of, uh, I guess, ease up on? Is it do we really need to stick close to the open space or is there some negotiation process there? Uh, can I jump in here, uh, Mr. Walker? Uh, I think maybe what I'm hearing and correct me if I'm wrong, is that they would like to see our next uh, iteration. Uh, and once they see that, okay, they're gonna be in a better position to see what they think they can or cannot do in terms of granting relief, uh, Monte, am I uh, incorrect in concluding that, uh, Mr. Watkins? David? Yes. Uh, yes I'm thank incorrect. You. No. Okay. I'm incorrect. No, you're you are correct. Okay. Good. All right. So, Monte, Rachel, I think what I, uh, we do is we do our homework. We need to do our homework. That's what we need to do. Rachel, can I step in for a minute? Sure, Ken. Um, to answer your question, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Monte is if you try your best not to reduce the amount, the square footage, but just the dimensional requirements is a good start. You okay. understand? You know how yes. there's a dimensional requirement in order to, to uh, account for what that is for open space? It, we're willing to, um, to give a relief on that dimensional requirement, but let's start off with just having the same square footage and see where we go from there. That's that's exactly what I was, I guess, trying to get at. Yes, that's and good. that's why I just want to make sure it's clear that you know there's good reasons. I don't think we want to do it without good reasons. I think this is a unique site, and the fact that you still maintain the square footage of open space, just the dimensional requirements have changed a little bit. Let's not make it such that it's like a one to three ratio, uh, ratio but you know, it's something that I think you have. Uh, would have a good eye on just trying to say, hey, this is what we think and we can go, from, we can talk from there. Okay, so, that's, sorry, go ahead. So the, the last thing I wanted to talk a little bit more about is the first floor. And, you know, I, I share uh, Gene's concern that it's, it's not a lot of space. And one of the common complaints we hear about existing space in Arlington is that it's it's too small, the existing commercial spaces. So I I have some I have some concern about that as it's shown on the plan. And now we're talking about potentially in order to meet accessibility requirements, 
reducing that further to add an accessible unit. Um, and, uh, you know, at that point, I'm, I'm beginning to, to question whether we're really uh, meeting uh, the intention of the mixed use bylaw, uh, even though I, I do think, uh, you know, in, in a theoretical sense, it would, it would be uh, uh, a benefit to have an accessible unit. Um, and uh, with respect to the parking reduction, um, I, I like Gene's um, uh, creative suggestion uh, of adding an affordable unit. Um, I know that's challenging in a building this size and you're not otherwise required to have an affordable unit, but um, affordability is, is um, one of the top housing issues that, that we're dealing with, not, not just in Arlington, but the region. Uh, so if there were a way to somehow make that happen, that would solve your parking problem and would uh, help us meet our our goals of having more affordable housing here. And I, I recognize that's a big ask and very complicated in a project of this size, but uh, I, I thought it was an interesting suggestion uh, to think about. That's all I have for the moment. Thank you, David. Uh, Catherine? Hi, thank you. Um, so I uh, really like this plan. I think it brings a lot to a neighborhood. Um, I live quite close to this project and I'm really enthusiastic about um, something like this coming into the neighborhood. And so um, my comments are really um, to sort of emphasize some of the points that other board members have raised that are things that um, I think either you all should think about um, or things that I just strongly support that are already um, in the project or things you're already thinking about. Um, so first, I really like the idea of uh, Ken raised this, of bringing it closer to the sidewalk. Um, I think it just knowing that particular stretch, um, it improves sort of the feeling of walkability, um, the feeling of making it more vibrant. Um, and so I think that's definitely something that I would support. Um, I like the idea of adding another accessible uh, unit in the first floor area. That's something that's feasible. Um, more housing is helpful in that area and consistent with some town priorities around having more housing, especially accessible housing. Um, and finally, if it is possible, I do also support um, having a um, just a single driveway rather than the two curb cuts that you currently have. Again, thinking about sort of the town's priorities around pedestrian safety and improved walkability, having fewer places where cars are coming in and out seems preferable from a pedestrian perspective and I think consistent with town priorities. Um, but thank you. Great. Thank you, Catherine. Um, with that, I, I just I want to echo um, what my colleagues identified as well. I don't think I have anything additional to add. I think it was a very thorough review. I do have a list of all of the items that they've asked uh, to be examined before before um, the next the next time we we meet, as it sounds like this will most likely. Uh, be continued to an, another hearing. So I'll go through those after we open this up for public comment. So unless there's any other comment from the board. Hey, Kelly, I, I, have, I have one go thing. Go ahead, Jean. I have one thing I forgot um, having to do with the driveways and maybe this will be resolved if there's a single driveway or not, but I didn't understand where the snow would get piled up during snowstorms. Um, there doesn't seem to be any space that would be available really to do that. And you clearly can't shovel the snow out or plow the snow out or onto Mass Ave. So I think whether it's this design or another design you come back with, you'll need to identify some way to deal with the snow. That's Thank you. Excellent point. Thank Let me you. give that thought, Jane. Between and now I, and next to me. To that same end, uh, or in that same vein, I think looking also at the planting strip that currently the, the buffer strip that we can reduce to five feet that's in the rear of the site along the retaining wall, you know, to the question about opening doors and how that would work against the large retaining wall, just when you're looking at that view from the street and that very large retaining wall, having a 
planting buffer zone to soften this might actually be something that you know you you look at as well no matter how you reconfigure the parking yep yes great anything else from the board members rachel i had one more question great. um trash removal um how are you thinking that would be accomplished with the trash room at the back of the property Uh, most likely, <laughs> most likely, it would have to be uh, private trash service that's brought out. Yeah. So you think, you know, bins wheeled out to the curb is what you're thinking? Uh, either wheeled out to the curb, or if it's a private service, they would come get them. Well, I I, I ask because again. Uh, with the circulation perhaps being tight uh, around the building, if you're thinking about large vehicles like a garbage truck uh, going in there, um, that that could be an issue. As you oh, definitely down, truck in there, no. Yeah, as you come down Mass Ave, uh, uh, Dave, uh, David, on the other side of Dunkin' Donuts, you'll see big barrels out on the sidewalk, and that's how they do it, as a matter of fact. So we'd, we'd probably do the same thing. I, I understand. I'm, I'm not sure uh, uh, how preferable that is uh, in, in a primarily residential right. building, but- uh, Those are residential buildings where the barrels are, by the way. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. Um, so I think at, at this point, um, I'm gonna open this up to public comment. Um, so um, as the public <clears throat> wishes to comment on this docket item, I'd ask you to please use the raise hand function, um, which is found in the participant list. Um, and we will, um, you will be allowed three minutes um, Jenny will be running a, a timer, so um, please try and complete your thoughts within three minutes. Please note that um, each comment will not be addressed directly by the applicant following your comments. We'll address them at the end unless there are specific points of clarification that are required. Um, additionally, please remember to state your name and address as you start your comment period. And Rachel, just a reminder, we may have some people on the phone who can't raise their hand. Thank you, and if you, that's right. So I will call on those who do have their hands raised. Um, Ms. Ward and I do know that uh, you are, are also looking to speak and if anyone else um, who is uh, joining us via phone and not via web, um, please let me know uh, as we complete the, those who uh, have raised their hand. Okay, so I will start with Andreas um, Kellis. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Andreas Kellis. I'm the resident at uh, 15 Woodbury Street, directly behind this property. And um, I have several concerns that I wanted to articulate. First of all, I want to state, you know, I'm happy that the building is was torn down and is being uh, redone. So I think that point was made initially. But I do have some significant concerns I wanted to bring up. The first is the uh, tree removal plan. So um, I actually contacted this developer um, at the time of the demolition because I noticed that um, there was a very large uh, evergreen, I think it was over 20 caliper that was removed. Um, you guys probably have seen that from Mass Ave. There were also several maples directly on the property line on the north side of the property that were removed. And uh, when I looked at the tree plan, it actually only shows the removal of eight trees all on the west side of the property. Uh, so none of these trees seem to be represented in the tree removal plan, uh, which concerns me. Fundamentally, um, we lost a lot of cover to Mass Ave by the removal of those maple trees and uh, the large evergreen. I did contact the tree warden, um, but it's very unclear about why there's a discrepancy between, and satellite photos will show those trees. So I've, I've sent those as well to the tree warden. So I'm fundamentally concerned about that. Um, and the plans that are shown don't seem to show the replacement of any trees to the, you know, of not only the size of the eight original trees, but the, uh, the other maple trees on the north side that were removed or the very large evergreen that was removed. I'm fundamentally concerned about the grade of this property. Uh, as has been mentioned, it's steeply graded. The existing property that was there prior that was demolished 
had a garage at the level of Mass Ave, but then uh, the rear of the property was actually much higher. And with the plan that's presented, the removal of, of dirt that would, be need, that would need, need to be done to get everything to Mass Ave level would result in a very, very large increase in the height of the retaining wall. So that's gonna be a precipitous drop that's gonna be there that is not currently there because of the grade that was pre-existing. So I'm very concerned about that. Um, the height of the building, which was mentioned uh, being lower than our building uh, is correct, but I don't have an elevation plan, so I can't confirm that. But I wanna say that the removal of the maple trees all at the rear of the property have now completely exposed what was previously shaded and was covered up and we couldn't see the building that was pre-existing. So I'm, I'm very disappointed with that. And it doesn't, again, seem to be on the tree plan. In general, I have a concern that this um, replacement of a two unit building, residential building, with a four unit building along with commercial is overly ambitious for the size of the lot. That really we're trying to squeeze in six units of six vehicles of parking, um, a much larger building, a lot of grading and removal of trees that cannot be replaced at this point, I don't believe. Thank you for your comments. Let's see. Next, we have uh, Barbara Thornton. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I will try and be real fast here. I am delighted to see housing coming into Arlington. I would love to have so you have some affordable housing units, but I am 100% in favor of this project. I do have a couple of questions. One is why you haven't gone up four stories and instead of just three and two um, why you're worrying about putting an office space or a commercial space on the first floor and not make it two, two accessible units i think arlington very much needs a commercial space but i don't think that one unit that you're offering is going to make a big difference in our tax base so those are my questions Thank you, Ms. Thornton. Uh, let's see, next we have uh, Don Seltzer. Before I begin, I would like to ask the chair for the courtesy of having speaker view shown rather than this uh, countdown clock. Uh, we stated before we started that we would be running a countdown clock for those people who were, so that they understood. Okay. And they had left. But the applicant you. is asking to build a four unit apartment building in a B1 district. We have a zoning bylaw and a table of allowable uses. Four unit apartment buildings are simply not allowed in a B1 district. Three units would be fine, but four is not. To allow this exception would set a precedent and this board could expect to receive many future applications for similar exceptions to the table of uses. Mr. Inessi already has one lined up for another apartment building in a B1 zone. He will undoubtedly argue that it is capricious and arbitrary to allow one exception and not others. Some members of this board have the impression that the town council has issued a legal opinion stating that mixed use means that any two uses can be placed in any district. That is not correct. I've asked Doug Heim and he has told me that he has not issued any legal finding. He attributes this misunderstanding to correspondence with a resident in which he offered some informal views. To put it in his exact words, it was only the genesis of an informal opinion. We do, however, have the official opinions of those who helped the write the bylaw. In 2016, they stood before the assembled town meeting and explained that only those uses that were already allowed in a district would be allowed under mixed use. It was clear, it was unequivocal. Worked with both the inspectional services, uh, the head of inspectional services, as well as town council on the wording that's before you. And only the uses that are permitted in a particular district are the ones that can happen in a mixed use in that district. So just to clarify on that point. Any use that comes into a neighborhood has to has to comply with what's already permitted in that potential. And again, it has to fit within the permitted use. A parking garage won't be permitted in there if a parking garage isn't permitted. Uh, a residential on top of a gas station won't be permitted if that use is not already permitted. It has to fit what's already allowed under zoning. A four-unit apartment building is not allowed in a B1 district. 
It's that simple. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seltzer. Uh, the next person to speak is Steve Revelak. Hello, Madam Chair. This is Steve Revelak. I live at 111 Sunnyside Avenue. I just wanted to say that I think this is a nice project and I am okay with it. Uh, particularly, I like the residential component. We're looking at the possibility of four new homes, perhaps five, if there is an accessible, uh, accessible unit on the first floor. Uh, these are homes that people will live in. And I believe that the residents that you know, could eventually occupy them will be rather grateful for having a nice place to live. So I, I realize there's more work to do and I encourage the board to work with the applicant so that this can go forward. And um, yeah, this is exciting. And I hope that we can see more projects like this along Mass Ave and Broadway. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Black. Uh, uh, Patricia Warden, I believe that you are on the phone. Ms. Warden? I think she's muted. Hello, can you hear me? We can now, thank you. Okay, um, thank you. Patricia Warden, 27 Jason Street. Um, since the time allowed for tonight's hearing is very short, I have written remarks which are already submitted and asked that they be written, um, that they be included in my testimony to explain my abbreviated comments here, which are as follows. Um, the project at 1500 Massachusetts Avenue violates the zoning bylaw so badly that it should never have been considered. Tonight's hearing is a demonstration of the ineffectiveness of the planning department and the director of economic development. The, proposal need, the proponent needs to present an economic analysis. There are several points I should make. First and foremost, a four unit apartment building is simply not allowed in a B1 district, whether mixed use or not. Secondly, the town has a, rec a recognized need for affordable residential units. This project has none, zero. Thirdly, the project, um, if um, approved, would encourage um, wanton destruction of property, trees, and landscape in anticipation of being awarded um, an approved permit project for an illegal project. Um, so other details I have sent you already, but you have no committed, apparently no committed tenant for your commercial area, then th that makes it likely that the entire building would become, could become residential because of a loophole in our zoning bylaw, which should be corrected. But, uh, and I also want to point out that there are definite safety dangers with your curb cuts. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Warden. Uh, Mr. Loretti, Chris Loretti. Madam Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, please Hello. go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Chris, Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street. Um, and I guess I want to start by saying a bit disappointed in the understanding the board has shown in Arlington zoning bylaw. And indeed, even in the um, legal notice itself, it talks about um, issuing a permit under section 3.4 of the zoning bylaw. But you've, you've neglected that you have to issue permit, a special permit under section 3.3. And the very first decision criteria under that section is that the use requested is listed as a special permit use in the regulations for the applicable district. And clearly you haven't met that criterion with the um, use of a, an apartment house which, or apartment building, which is not allowed in the B1 district. You also haven't met section 3.3.3 F, and that is the requested use will not impair the integrity or character of the district. It's important to remember that the B1 zoning district is a district created from one and two family homes. They happen to be located on Mass Ave, and many of them had office uses in them. They can exist as one or two family homes. They can exist as, as offices. 
but to allow a four unit building with a, another use in it, like an office use, clearly is not in keeping with the character of the zoning district, that is the B1 district. And so I really don't see how you can allow you know, such a use in this district when it is so out of character. I wanna say I appreciate the applicants understanding the zoning bylaw and in particular, particularly as it relates to open space. They very clearly left that 25 foot uh, yard in front because that is required to meet the definition of usable open space. Once you start reducing that, I don't see how you can comply with the zoning bylaw requirements. Now, I, I am well aware of town council's memo and his suggestion that you can supplant the authority of the Zoning Board of Appeals and issue variances. And frankly, I don't think there's any legal basis for that. I don't think it'll stand up in court. And so I want to I want to end with a question. And as you know, a lot of the abutters to Hotel Lexington were, were you engaged in this sort of similar sort of lawlessness, I will call it, objected to the way you handled that. And I I understand there could be an appeal, and I'm wondering if there has been a has been an appeal or if there is one, and then the court strikes down your allowance for uses that are not allowed, it strikes down your granting of variances on the dimensional requirements, then what happens in a case like this? Are you gonna go back and then withdraw the special permit? So I think you, at a minimum, have to wait to see what happens with that special permit for Hotel Lexington, if indeed it is appealed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Loretti. Uh, are there anyone else who wishes to uh, render any public comment for this particular docket number tonight? All right, seeing none, I will close public comment and uh, reopen this to the members of the, of the board. Um, any further comments? I do have a list of the requests that have been made of the applicant um, prior to continuing to an, another hearing. Um, but wanted to see if anyone else had any comments before we discuss or hear a motion to continue. Great, I'll just run through my list and um, please jump in and if I have missed any of the major points, I, I just tried to catch the highlights here. Um, so we have a relook at the circulation slash parking configuration, including the curb cuts and turning radius on the site a review of the gross square footage calculation specifically on the first floor, looking at pushing the building forward a minimum of uh, five feet, looking at potentially including an accessible unit on the first floor or otherwise addressing accessibility if the property is to contain four units, looking at a market analysis for how to use the office space and whether addressing rentability looking at the balcony projections into the side yard, um, re-looking at the eight trees that have been identified by the tree warden and whether or not there are actually potentially more on the site that have been already removed and addressing a plan uh, for how to accommodate the tree warden's uh, requirements. Uh, looking at, at the uh, air handling unit screening on the roof from the abutters details of the retaining structure and the relationship of the abutters, as well as the surrounding buildings to the proposed new structure and addressing snow removal and trash removal on the site. Are there any other major items from my colleagues that I missed? There are, Location there are of the sprinkler room. Sprinkler room. And there are all of the um, dimensional issues I raised that they're gonna get back to me on. Yes, so I had that as gross square footage calculations, okay. but I'll add in other dimensional. Okay. Uh, there was also a question of uh, the sufficiency of the transportation demand management plan. Thank you. Uh, Rachel, did you get also the, the screen walls on the roof that David mentioned? I did, the AHU screening on the roof? Yep, okay. Yep. The last item is a rendering, a Thank rendering you. showing the neighboring structures. Yes, I did have that one. So it's details and a rendering. Okay. 
If you're good, I, I, I uh, so motion. Okay. So that's a motion to continue docket 3633. Jenny, do you have a suggestion on the next meeting date? Can I ask Monte, Rachel, uh, how much time he thinks he might need to Absolutely. work on this? Monte? Rachel, you need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. So I was going to include that as part of the, the motion before oh, we have it. Okay. Second. Sorry, oh. Ken. <laughs> I think I'm doing this correctly. Please. Yes. Some, you're you doing a great. First. You're doing a much better job than me. <laughs> um, should I be talking now, Rachel, or what should I do? Please go ahead. Yes, if you. Okay. Monte, I think are you, you there, Monte? Yes, I. Uh, All right. How much time do we need? So I think that if if we're, is it possible to get into the next meeting? I guess is my first question. Because if it is, then we would push to do that. Or what is the deadline that we need to submit things? by to get into well, that meeting. Uh, I want enough time allocated for us, Monte, so we can deal, we have a myriad of issues here. I wanna be, uh, uh, be able to deal with them all, okay, effectively. And that mm -hmm. really is your burden, okay? So how much time do you think you might need? Let's, let's work with you and go from there. Uh, I guess that's what I'm saying is that in the interest of our client, we would push as hard and fast as possible if it is possible for us to get in the next meeting. If it is not, then we would go for the meeting after when that. When is the next meeting, Rachel? Next meeting is on October 5th and I need all materials by October 1st. No later than, no, that's when they're posted. Yeah. Uh, okay, we can, we can certainly. But my preference would be to have them on that Tuesday, not on Thursday. Thursday is when they're they're posted. Oh, right. That's the latest possible the time. Okay, all right. Um, I, I, I think that that might be pushing it. Me too. So okay. <laughs> Me then too. What's, when's the next meeting? October 19th. Yes, and so we would need materials by the week prior. So the 12th? Yeah, I'm the, the, yeah, the 13th or 14th. Okay. So what's the next date, uh, Jenny? October 19th is the next meeting after October 5th. Okay, all right. You okay with that, Monty? Perfect. Good, thank you. Great, so do we hear a motion to continue docket 3633 to uh, October 19th? So motion. Second. Can I have a, a little bit of discussion before we vote, which is I just want to be clear that it's going to be very hard for me to approve this project if there's a vast decrease in the commercial space. If the, I didn't hear that, Gene. If, if there's a large decrease in the commercial space, I'm not likely to approve the project. I just want to not have you go away thinking that you can get rid of most of the commercial space and be fine. You may be fine with my colleagues. It, if I could, Gene, um, this is Monty. Uh, so one of the things that we can work on first is the market analysis. And can we communicate closely with you on that to find out where that lands? Well, you can yeah, communicate with uh, Jennifer Rader about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with Jenny on that, not with you, Gene. Okay. Yep. Okay. Anything else before we vote? Okay, so I'll run through the uh, run through our list here. Uh, Ken? Yes. Dean? Yes. David? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Okay, so that closes or that continues docket. 3633 to October 19th. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you all for your time. Okay, let's see. The next item on our agenda is um, uh, 10 or excuse me, 19 R Park Ave, a review of an update on the Minuteman bikeway connection. Uh, Jenny, do you want to introduce this item? Thank you. 
sorry, yes. <laughs> I was doing two things at once, not successfully there. Um, put on the screen here the submission that was provided by Pam Hallett, the executive director, who is also on the line. Um, I'm going to actually unmute her and ask her to come into the meeting. Pam? Hmm. Not sure where she is. She's right here, but okay. okay. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, so this is similar to when you uh, you reviewed the final plans and spec specifications for this project, as well as 117 Broadway. This is back before you because there's been a change since that last meeting, uh, specifically to 19R Park Ave and in a manner that I thought was best for the board to review and also understand um, and allow the applicant to describe what is happening and what, what we're hoping will happen with this, but what, um, what modifications might, be need, might need to be made uh, to both the site plan and how that relates to the overall goal, goals of the project. So um, there was also a letter provided by Pam that I've attached to the agenda. Uh, just right now we're looking at the site plan view. So, Pam. Hi, this is Pam Hallett, Executive Director of the Housing Corporation of Arlington. I also live at One Gilboa Road in Arlington, and I'm a town meeting member. Um, so, what what transpired is um, when we were doing the remediation of the 19R Park Ave site, uh, we had significant cost overruns over well over $100,000. Uh, the, it turned out that the soil, uh, far more of the soil was contaminated than, than we expected, and it was contaminated with PCPs, which needed to go to a significant uh, dump site, uh, which is very costly. So um, as, as we finished up the uh, remediation, we funded a part of that. We had a small contingency of 50000 but we funded the difference uh, from the project contingency in order to can have it completed. Um, once we had done that, the, our funders became very concerned that we no longer had a full 5% contingency for building the buildings basically, um, and were nervous <clears throat> that at some point we would run out of money. So we um, told them that we would come up with some cost saving measures in order to uh, ensure that we had significant um, contingency funding available. Uh, one of those um, possibilities was to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, not do the bridge um, to the Minuteman bike, um, bike pass because that, <coughs> that is an expensive amenity and it is a community amenity as opposed to something that the um, buildings actually require. And so um, I've had several conversations with Jennifer Rate, and um, we uh, proposed that as an option to our funders that we would uh, hold off on building the building at this point in order to, if we needed to in the future, uh, uh, use that, those funds originally designated for the bridge uh, to use them instead for finishing the buildings. Um, the funders were satisfied with that. Uh, we've continued to build. We're now about 35, depending on which building, 35 to 40 percent complete on the project. Um, and so we spent a lot of time redesigning this, the site to show that um, the bridge, if it's removed, is not going to have a significant impact on the site design to begin with. Um, it also allowed us to reconfigure where fire trucks would come in in the event that we had a fire and that they would be able to come in off of Lowell Street rather than uh, having to go through the easement through the gas station. And that we... Um, reconfigured the section right by the building B, which is the uh, larger of the two buildings, uh, which would then allow the fire truck to pull all the way in, 
back into that space by building B and then be able to turn around and pull back out uh, onto Lowell Street. Um, so we've accomplished two significant issues uh, by this redesign. Um, just for you to know, we have received information from the MBTA uh, with many, many uh, restrictions as to what they would be willing to allow us to do. The, you know, this had all been in process with them to begin with. Um, we still don't know what they're going to propose as lease conditions um, or overall um, costs on an annual basis. So that is still in process at this point. So we just wanted to bring this to your attention in case uh, at some point we will have to actually take the bridge out officially from the project. At this point, I am having the GC reconfigure any remobilization costs um, and uh, so that we know exactly what we'd be looking for uh, in terms of remaining contingency in order to have the bridge built at the end of construction. Well, thank you for the for the update, Pam. Um, wanted to, Jenny, do you have any specific items yeah, that just, you were to address? Just one thing is um, I realize that not everybody may know um, where the bridge, where the bridge and this whole walkway was supposed to be. So I'm, I'm sort of drawing a circle where it was, but I'm also going to um, stop sharing for a minute and find the original plan as approved, just so we can go, we can understand what the difference is for the purpose of this conversation. Okay. Richard, can I say it, a few it, things? It, yeah, uh, could I just add that your bridge would effectively be coming off that paved uh, section near Building B. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, yeah, I was around when this uh, project was approved. And, um, you know, this project here is 100% affordable units. And it's, it's, it's uh, transforming a site that was contaminated. Uh, and making it non-contaminated. I think this was a great project. And um, I, I just want to understand a little clearer, Pam. If if there's money left over on the project, that you would put the, the bridge in. If there isn't any money left over, you would uh, not put it in. That, is that what you're saying? That's basically what we're saying. Now, we are also uh, starting to look for potential other funding, but we have not do not have any applications in at all for that so at this point i would say yes that's that is the point if we have the funding remaining we would build it if we do not we would not and would you also say that in the future you may uh try to plan to get money to, to build it in the future or would you well, take that future money for other uh, housing projects in arlington uh, i'm not sure to, what money I'm just trying to get a clear essentially, understanding. Well, essentially what we have um, figured out, initially we didn't think this was doable, is that the, build, the bridge could be built. It'll be a bit more complicated, but it could be built at the end or after the project itself is completed. Okay. It probably costs more. It will. There'll be certainly remobilization, uh, depending on how long it takes to find that money or have that money and do it. You know, costs always rise, unfortunately. Um, but other than that, it's certainly doable. And can you remind me again, what was the height difference between the parking lot and the bike trail? Uh, the uh, there is it's uh, 10 feet. 10 feet. Okay. So it's a pretty good yeah. size drop. Okay. It's a good size drop and it, this is a wheelchair accessible bridge. So it had many, you know, back and forth angled uh, ramps as, as part of the bridge. So it's not just a straight drop. Yep. Okay. I have it on the screen now, Pam, the old, the original version as approved. Okay. Yeah. I can't see it though, of course. <laughs> 
So, yes. Uh, Pam, this is David Watts, and I, I was also Hi, on the board when we approved the project, yeah. and I remain very excited about it. Um, so, you know, I, I have to say I, I will be very disappointed if uh, if this bridge is not able to be built. Uh, I do think it's actually an important plan, uh, important part of the transportation plan for a development like this um, and important for the health of the residents um, to give them easy access to the Minuteman. Um, I'm glad to hear that you are exploring other funding um, options perhaps. Um, and uh, I don't know if you can talk any more about that, but certainly- uh, uh, I'd rather not. It's, it, but, uh, you know, of course, one thing to look at is, is CPA funding specifically for this, um, because it is a significant community uh, amenity. Um, but uh, that is that is one of the fun sources that we're looking at. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I I remain hopeful uh, that. Uh, that you will be able to to find the funding to to get this done in the first instance, um, because mm -hmm. I, I do know the challenges of of trying to get something built after a project is completed. Um, so uh, I I guess my my question uh, is is do we need to approve something at this point, or is this just by way of of notice. Right I now, believe this is just by way of notice that we there is no decision that has been made. Our funders would also love to have the bridge. They see it as a, also a very valuable uh, community amenity, um, which they like. Uh, so um, I, at this point, I think it is too premature for any decisions. Okay. Right. There's not, um, no, there's not a need to vote tonight necessarily on anything. It's also not a formal hearing. So if there is something where we need to amend this condition to the special permit, that would be a, a formal hearing. We'll reopen the, the docket and, you know, have a, a different conversation as a public hearing. This was meant to be um, advisory in terms of a change that's happening, but technically it is still a required part of the plan. Per the special permit condition. Thank you, uh, Jean or or Katie. Any further comments for Pam? I'll just say I agree with what David and Pam both said, and the uh, CPA applications are available now. Pam. Yes, I'm aware. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> a great project and yeah I've been, like everyone else I, I hope you're able to find funding uh to support this uh infrastructure but um it's really exciting to see this come to the neighborhood thank you great I certainly echo those sentiments as well so thank you so much for the update thank you all Great. Uh, let's see. So our next agenda item is uh, committees and appointments. Uh, Jenny, do you want to lead us through this section here? Yes. So the first committee uh, that we have uh, where we have an appointment to make is for the Housing Plan Implementation Committee. And I see Ben Bradlow is, uh, is, is saying hello. And he is... Um, Somebody that um, actually Aaron Zorko uh, interviewed as part of the process where we accept, we open it up as a committee posting, uh, then applied and uh, Aaron conducted an interview and we would recommend that Ben be appointed to the committee. So Ben is here to answer any, to tell us a little bit about himself and answer any of your questions. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you to the board for considering my appointment. Um, as I mentioned in my application materials, I moved to Arlington um, quite recently in uh, end of July. 
Um, I've been living in Somerville and Cambridge since 2011, mostly in Somerville. Um, and I've been involved in a number of uh, housing related initiatives in the city of Somerville, and in particular as part of a neighborhood council that negotiated a community benefits agreement with the um, master redeveloper of the Union Square neighborhood in Somerville. Um, yeah, my, my, my work is a, I'm currently a postdoctoral researcher um, at the Weatherhead Center for International Affairs at Harvard. Um, and I'm trained as a sociologist and an um, urban planner. Um, I'm happy to talk more about um, my experiences and qualifications, but I, I was told that I should speak briefly. So I'll leave it here. And um, I'm very excited about the work of the housing plan um, in the town. And I think that I have, um, I would love to contribute to what the committee has been doing and what it hopes to do. Thank you. Thank you. I'll turn it over to my colleagues for any questions or comments, starting with Ken. Um, I, I looked through your resume and uh, Ben, you, you have quite a, quite a resume there uh, academically, but have you actually done any um, work for developments or any practical work uh, on public pro public projects, some of that, that you can just yeah. tell us? So um, I, I worked for five years in, in South Africa um, with uh, communities and informal settlements that were negotiating with city governments um, around development projects to upgrade basic services in their neighborhood. Um, so that's that's kind of my main work uh, as a professional. Um, that on occasion that included partnerships with private developers as well. Um, and then in my work in Somerville, we were uh, as part of a neighborhood council. We were, I was part of a team and uh, really leading a team that was negotiating on a weekly basis with um, a national development consortium. Um, to secure funds for additional affordable housing above and beyond um, the 20% inclusionary zoning that exists in Somerville, as well as a number of other funds for um, job training programs, um, di different kinds of open space conditions. Uh, there are a wide range of things that we were negotiating beyond just housing, but that's, that's what we were working on on housing. Thank you. Uh, David? Uh, ben, you, you certainly have a fascinating background. Uh, and I, I think uh, you have a, would bring a unique uh, but relevant perspective to the committee. So I'm, I'm supportive and, and don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Yes, Ben, thanks so much. Anybody who agrees to volunteer for something like this deserves a lot of credit and a pat on the back. So thank you for doing that. I'm just very briefly, what do you think, Arling, where do you think Arlington should be going in terms of more housing production? Where should it be going? Um, you know, I think that, you know, this is not an Arlington specific issue in a lot of ways, though, though there are some clear particularities to the Arlington context. Um, but there's a, there's a regional housing problem that's been identified quite clearly in the housing plan. Um, and I think that Arlington is in a good position um, to be one of the leading communities in the region in terms of alleviating that, that housing deficit while at the same time um, being thoughtful about how we do that um, to make sure that there's uh, the kind of buy-in that, that doesn't allow uh, kind of major new development to um, divide the city. And one thing that I, I want to bring up in terms of um, my experience around precisely that is the work that we did in Union Square um, was very contentious at times in our community. 
Um, we had very vitriolic meetings at various points with different uh, parts of the neighborhood. And by the time we negotiated an agreement, we had a 96% approval in the ratification vote by the community. Um, and so, you know, I understand, I'd like to think that that experience has taught me how to navigate um, the real, you, you know, the, in, the inevitable kinds of conflicts and divisions that arise in development and how to get to something that uh, at least a wide range of a majority can live with and be happy with. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Um, Katie? Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for volunteering your time. Um, this is a great record, and I definitely support um, your appointment. Thank you. Great. And I'll also echo my support, and I specifically appreciate your sharing your experience working together with the residents um, of the Union Square neighborhood in, in Somerville. As a former Inman Square <laughs> resident, I, uh, I witnessed firsthand how contentious some of those discussions were, and uh, I appreciate you jumping in then as well as here now. So I think with that, um, we need to vote, correct Jenny, as a board uh, for the appointment. So yes. uh, I'll take a motion to approve, uh, let's see. Motion to approve uh, Ben uh, Bradlow for the Housing Plan uh, Information Committee. I'll second the motion. Great, and I'll run through the list. Uh, Dean? Yes. David? Yes. Ken? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good luck, Ben. All right. And we have a few additional um, uh, seats to fill on other working groups, Jenny. Yes. So this is sort of a, you know, tonight we did the organizational meeting, which was, you know, unexpected, I realized. But I thought I would bring up appointments to committees, especially with Andrew now um, off the board. He had actually served a number of roles. Um, and then also one of the, um, or uh, the, the CPA committee is something that we usually revisit before they get into the application season, uh, which is actually what's happening now. They're in the preliminary application. So I wanted to make sure that we uh, revisited our appointments on committees. Um, to make sure that and we, zoning bylaw working group is something that we haven't brought up and I looked back it's been two years. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we are fresh on our appointments with all uh, the various groups that we have uh, people working on. So the first one is the Community Preservation Act Committee. Jean has been serving on that committee for I believe the two and a half years maybe now. Three, three and a half. Three, years. three and a half years. Um, so uh, quite a while. Um, for the board. And then the, um, uh, the Master Plan Implementation Committee, that was Andrew's uh, role. Andrew was actually also on the residential, um, the design guidelines working group, um, which had morphed uh, over time. But uh, because that timeline is also rapidly uh, winding down, I don't know that we know, you know, I think there might be one more working group meeting happening. So I don't know if anybody's interested in that. I didn't put it on this list. Um, zoning by the working group I mentioned, uh, and we already addressed the HPIC, although it would be nice to have a board member participate occasionally in those meetings as well. So um, I realize they're all happening at different times though. So the CPA committee basically is, a, is an evening commitment, though during the review period, it is quite busy with uh, uh, you know, talking with applicants, um, sometimes doing a site visit, um, attending hearings before town meeting usually, um, and having a number of sessions. So that one has kind of a, uh, you know, peaks and valleys in terms of timing, uh, usually bunched up around application season and town meeting uh, that you can anticipate a lot of meetings and Jean can, can correct or add to that. Um, Master Plan Implementation Committee generally meets quarterly. That has been since the beginning. Uh, zoning Bylaw Working Group is basically a, uh, for the most part, a first uh, 
first maybe Wednesday of the month, I think, in the morning uh, for as long as I can recall, although occasionally there are additional meetings as well for that group. And HPIC, generally speaking, is meeting now the first Thursday evening of the month. Design Review Working Group is uh, has sporadic timing, so um, I can talk about that if necessary. So I'm looking to just get a sense of which board members intend to participate on these various groups and committees, or reaffirm the people who are participating. Thank you. So should I start? Go for it. So when I got on the redevelopment board three and a half years ago, Kim said, be on the Community Preservation Act Committee. I don't want to do it anymore. So <laughs> I said, sure. If somebody else wants to do it, um, I'm happy to give it up for somebody else. I'm also happy to keep it. As Jenny said, the, um, the process pretty much starts now with the application going out. We get preliminary applications back, I think sometime in October. We have some meetings, we review them. We decide which uh, applicants uh, we want to put in a full application. Sometimes have to consult with the applicants about what we think they should be doing. Then the applications come in, we review them, we do site visits. Some people talk to some of the applicants, then there are public hearings. And then we have votes on um, which um, projects to recommend approval to town meeting. Fortunately, in the time I've been on it, we've never had a disagreement about what any of the votes, and we've always had enough money for all of the applicants that have turned out with applications at the end. A couple have gotten weeded out along the way. So, so far that's been, fine. Each year we think there won't be enough money for all the applications, but so far there has been. It's a good way to see what's happening in the town, meet some interesting people on the committee, and um, help move Community Preservation Act along. You're doing a great job, Jean. Oh, stop it. <laughs> So I'm Should I go next? To, I was to say, I'm willing to trade with somebody or I'm willing to keep it. Go ahead, David. Uh, so I've been serving on the zoning bylaw working group for I'm not sure how many years. Um, well, you were, you were on the zoning recodification group. Right. <laughs> so we started, it's, we started, it's been a while. <laughs> We started. Uh, we started together. Uh, most mostly the same people. There were a few changes when we shifted over to the zoning bylaw working group, um, but uh, we um, uh, see um, uh, most of the uh, proposed changes to the zoning bylaw in the first instance, um, and. Um, and uh, also uh, see and participate in uh, studies like the, uh, the study of uh, the industrial zones that's, that's been going on. Um, and uh, it's, um, it can be very detailed, nitty gritty work. And uh, I've certainly learned, learned a lot doing it. And uh, it's, uh, um, it's a good group of people. Um, we, we do occasionally have somewhat spirited discussions, um, but uh, it, it's certainly a, a, a good and I think effective working group. Uh, so I'm happy to continue doing that since I, I for whatever reason, continued to be interested in, in uh, zoning details. Um, but uh, I, as Jean said, if anyone has a deep desire to uh, to tackle the zoning bylaw, uh, I I would entertain stepping away from that. And any thoughts? Nope. Okay, uh, Katie. Any of these openings or groups that sound 
like something you'd be interested in jumping into or learning more about? In, uh, in a world where my kids were older and we weren't in a pandemic that's messed with my child care, totally. Um, but I think right now, this, this is the max commitment I can offer right now with a six-year-old and a four-year-old, so. Great, and uh, with my six-year-old and <laughs> just putting my head in the sand about what's about to happen with his three days of remote education, I, I feel similarly, I think the only Thing I potentially might be able to take on is to, um, if we need to fill the seat for the master plan implementation committee, given that that's quarterly, that's probably the most that I could probably take on, even though I did promise my family I would take on no more volunteer positions. <laughs> so. Does anyone else have an interest in either the master plan implementation committee or the housing plan implementation committee? It looks like Jenny, if I'm incorrect if, if Jean and David remain on their particular committees and working groups, those are the two that we need to fill tonight? Those are the two, yes. So does anyone have a specific interest in the master plan implementation committee or the housing plan? Don't think I got the time right now. No. Um, can we... Uh, Supplement them with staff, Jenny? Well, we already participate. <laughs> so <Okay>. um, <laughs> yeah, both Aaron, Aaron has really been attending the housing plan implementation committee meetings um, as of late. They have been in conflict with other meetings I've needed to attend or other commitments. Um, master plan implementation committee we haven't held in a while. Um, so that one's been a little bit on hiatus and needs to be, I think that they, are, they do have a meeting next month though. Um, so, I mean, of course, staff always, staff participate in all of these committees and working groups <laughs> there. Uh, yes. Uh, but if there's not a board member who can participate, um, for now, we can just sort of come back to this maybe in a few months. Yeah, I'm happy to put my hand up for the master plan implementation committee, given that it's quarterly. Um, mm -hmm you know, at least in an interim until things calm down and perhaps other people are able to take on other commitments. Yeah, I will just say with the HPIC, we are planning to do a housing production plan update. And um, it was very helpful when we had the ARB member participating, Andrew participating in that process during the housing plan advisory uh, piece. So it would be great once that actually starts up to have somebody participating at that time. So we're, we're planning to post the RFP for a consultant to help with that plan soon. Um, and that'll you know likely kick off actual work, I would say in a couple months to maybe early next year, just at the rate that we're working. So maybe we can, like I just said, maybe we can revisit this in a few months and somebody from this group can participate. I mean, I'm interested in that, but I think the timing is going to conflict with the CPA committee. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah Thursday night thing, which I think is almost the same time as CPA sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh, do we need to vote on these individually or? Um, I think you can vote on it as a group. I think that's fine. OK. So we have um, looking for a motion for Jean to continue on the Community Preservation Act Committee, um, myself, Rachel, to join the Master Plan Implementation Committee, uh, David to continue on the Zoning Bylaw Working Group, and for the time being, uh, for the seat to remain vacant from the ARB on the Housing Plan Implementation Committee. So motion. Go ahead, David, you got David, it. David, David motion. We have a second. I'll second. I'll second. And I'll run through the list. Um, David? Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I'm yes. OK. See, so the next item on our agenda is the fall meeting schedule. 
Virginia, I'll throw it back to you. Great, thank you. Um, so we have, as you heard a little bit earlier, we have a meeting on October 5th. That's our next meeting. We do have an agenda for that, including a hearing for uh, ESCAR, which is a 23 Broadway, um, where there will be a proposed retail marijuana uh, uh, establishment. And we have a couple of other things, including we're gonna talk about the design guidelines that I mentioned um, before. So that'll be coming to you at that time. And I think we'll also try to put in there an update on the industrial zoning study that David mentioned um, at that meeting, but it, it might go to the October 19th meeting. So I have to confirm that. The next meeting after that is October 19th. And then in November, just to confirm it's November 2nd and November 16th. What I wanted to let you know is that uh, tonight, the select board was um, discussing uh, opening the warrant for special town meeting on September 21st and holding special town meeting on November 9th. So um, at the moment, we have adequate time to bring back and refile, or as we discussed back in the spring, when we postponed a number of articles for the annual town meeting, we can refile those articles for the special town meeting, but we would need to schedule additional hearing dates. And um, I have a proposed timeline that I would like to provide to you. So we would actually, I would suggest using the October 19th meeting. Now I realize we just continued 1500 Mass Ave to that evening, <laughs> but perhaps after that, we would have our hearings um, on zoning warrant articles on that evening and then also on October 22nd, 26th, and 28th. Um, I looked at other conflicts and that seems to be the best situation. It's also better for us to not do consecutive e evenings just because of the posting issues and the time for turnaround between meetings. So I'd prefer to do it that way if possible. Um, I'm open to suggestions, but it's uh, the, the week after that, the first week of November is very dicey with the election. And um, I don't know if uh, the third or fourth, or I think it's the, the Wednesday and Thursday is possible, but it is, I suppose, an option, but then we're getting very close to the actual town meeting date. So I don't think that that would be logistically really feasible for us. October 19th really is the first night though that we could have any hearings because of the time it will take to post and have the legal notice. We can't do it any earlier than that. Jenny, what were the other dates? The October 22nd? 19th, 22nd, 26th, and 28th. And the special town meeting is on November 9th, which will be yeah. held virtually. Can you say that one more time? Yes, October 19th, which is a current meeting date. October 22nd, October 26th, October 28th, and special town meeting would be November 9th. You also have meet, regular meetings on November 2nd and November 16th. So I know that's a lot of meetings, but I just wanted to put out there that um, these are some options. I also wanna say that we had planned four nights of hearings back in the spring due to the number of warrant articles that we had to have hearings on. So that is why I've also looked at another four evenings here. And of um, course, it's possible we could get more. So, can I ask you another one question? Yeah. One, one I, I know we talked about it before, was our joint meeting with uh, the select board? Yeah, that's, uh, that's the next agenda item, actually. The, that is on September 21st. Next Monday. So Jenny, for the um, zoning warrant articles, can you put together an email package that you send to each of us soon with, with, I guess, what you have that we're gonna be looking at again? I don't know what it will be other than we would just be refiling, <clears throat> excuse me, we would try to refile what we had in the spring, just what but we the, the warrant is not gonna open until Monday and I don't know when it's closing. So mm -hmm. I don't. Hmm? So there were the ones we proposed. Are we anticipating that everyone who proposed their own warrant article would have to refile that? 
again for a special town meeting. And that what we, we would... communicated back in the spring was that we would essentially refile those warrant articles. Right. So, um, so that's, so, a, whole, that's I, a whole big package, both ours and the warrant. Yes. Effect. Right. So that's why I think it would be helpful to see, you know, as soon as, you know, not tomorrow, but when you can put together that whole thing so we have a chance to review it again. It's all on the, it's all, and I, what I would suggest is that after the warrant closes, then I'll put together a new package that everybody will have with all of the zoning articles. Okay. If you would like to review anything from Springtown meeting that wasn't heard, it's still posted on the ARB's page. I'm glad to resend it, but I don't want to confuse anybody that those are the only articles because the warrant has to reopen. They're going to have new article numbers. So I just, you know, that's why I'm hesitating a little bit, Jean. I'm not. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Sure. I also, I, well, I, I frankly don't know if the if all of the people who were the uh, prior petitioners will plan to refile. So uh, a couple of people actually didn't um, state that they planned to. So I don't know what will happen. Okay. I, I also want to just go back and refresh my memory because uh, with the passage of time, uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure uh, uh, we might not want to consider something uh, different from what we were originally proposing. Yeah, and I sort of came up with a couple of additional corrections to the bylaws since we put the package together. Well, the warrant, the warrant, uh, as I said, will open on the 21st. Our next meeting, though, isn't until October 5th. So if you were planning to file something as a board, that would be probably challenging at this juncture. Um, just to give you a sense of timing, I, I, I'm not sure that will work. So, so the, the warrant articles that were put off, the, the, they're just going to automatically be uh, refiled when the warrant opens? That is would be that, our intention. That, okay. Yes, that, that would be the intention. So how about I send around to Jean's earlier request, I'll send around what we had from last, from the spring, <laughs> from last year, which was actually the spring. Um, <laughs> Seems like a long time though, right? Um, I know. Ago. It's a lifetime ago. Yeah. <laughs> yes, can, that's very true. It's hard to recall. Um, so I will send that around. You can take a look again. Um, I don't know when the warrant is going to close, so I'm a little hesitant to, uh, I don't know if we will be able to propose anything next at the next meeting. I don't, um, know that that will be feasible just based on timing. Seems unlikely, plus the the timing for, you know, um, the legal notice just would be very compressed and too close, unfortunately. So the plan was, as we agreed in the spring when we postponed everything, is that we said we would simply refile everything um, to the next town meeting that was feasible. So that's still the plan. I'll send everything around, you can take a look. If anything feels like you really want to call it out um, and let me know something looks off or have any other suggestions, just let me know. And I will also let you know uh, what the select board decided this evening, although um, if I have any other information about it, I'll let you know in the time that we're on this call. Uh, but, but the most important thing is I really need to know the dates to confirm the dates that we would actually have the hearing. So this is, we're talking about the content, but maybe we could just pivot to uh, securing the dates. So I've got October 22nd, 26th, and 28th as the additional meetings. Would those work for the group? Yes. Yes. Okay, the, perhaps you the could- 20, The twenty six may be tricky for me. Um, not impossible, but tricky. Would these still be the Zoom meetings? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, these are all, everything is, everything is remote right now. We are not making any changes in that regard. And the special town meeting will also be a remote meeting. 
So if you are feeling inclined to do so, I would need a vote of adding additional these dates to your calendar. So move, or others. So moved October 22, 26, and 28. Be added, right? They would be added, yes. Yeah. We just need them. Yeah. Second. Second. Here, run through the list. Uh, Ken? Yes. Dean? Yes. David? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I'm a yes. Great, thank you. Great, so the next agenda item is the upcoming ARB goal setting meeting and joint meeting with the select board on next Monday, the 21st. Well, we have a, we have a joint meeting with the select board, which is a meeting that we were hoping to have in July, which was postponed. Um, to next Monday night. And uh, the goal is to, I think, what I would suggest the goal is to sort of revisit the conversation that you first had with the select board earlier this year, which as we just reflected, seems like a very long time ago, and perhaps reflect upon that conversation about housing and economic development issues because things have changed quite a bit. And um, we have some new members, they have some new members. And I think we should have an, uh, you know, revive that conversation. And also my suggestion would be to commit to some clear next steps again, like we did the last time. Uh, for example, the last time we committed to having, uh, this is what we, we had hoped to do. It was very soon after that, unfortunately, that we entered the pandemic. So uh, what, what we had hoped to do was uh, have a question campaign, which we actually started and then abruptly stopped because it was, really only a month of it actually. Um, and then we also agreed to have a, sort of a joint meeting of the chairs, uh, myself and the town manager and town council um, to prepare for the town meeting, which we also did, but then that also abruptly ended. Um, so those were a couple of the couple of things that we agreed to at that joint meeting that um, then occurred. So, uh, I would suggest that we revisit these things and perhaps uh, I wanna see if the board wanted to add anything to that agenda. And then related to this, we also need to update our annual goals. So currently we're, we're a little behind on our annual goal setting. Again, uh, the year before we actually did that in the summer, we haven't done that at this time. I'm happy to set time like a, a shorter window of time on Monday night just for the board to meet without the select board. So it'd be like, you'd have a meeting to talk about the goal setting for the upcoming year, and then you'd have your joint meeting or the other way around, whatever suits you. Um, but I thought it would be good to also revisit that. So I guess this agenda item kind of has two things going on uh, if you want to look at it that way. But we do need to revisit our annual goals. We're behind on that. And then I wanted to see if you agree with the items that I'm suggesting for the joint meeting with the select board and or if you and or if you have other things to add. Can we do that on September 21st at maybe at seven before the meeting and then ro roll into the other meeting? I think that's a great, great idea. I think I think what Jenny proposed and, and you just reiterated there, Ken, is Ken is um, great because then that'll allow us to really have our goals in hand as we go into that meeting together with the select board. Okay. I, I wish there was a way, uh, which doesn't seem likely given the timing uh, that we could have uh, a bit of a more relaxed opportunity to talk with each other about that uh like we some well some like some of us did the last time um but uh i i guess we'll take what we can get at this point we're not going to be conducting any meetings in person at this time so uh based on town policy right uh, how we are handling covid right but i do appreciate that and i enjoyed that goal setting meeting So it was a proposal that we meet by Zoom at seven on the 21st. And then 
resume with the select board at 845. I yeah. think so. I, I just will say I have to confirm with with Adam Chapdelaine, the town manager, just to confirm the the timing. But if it's if it's okay with you, I will confirm that we want to meet before the goal setting meeting. I just need to be one hundred percent sure about the timing. So I'm going to have to confirm by getting back to you. Okay. Is to vote on that one. Um, so motion. No, go ahead. We don't have to. You, you can, to. you can, if you want to. I mean, no. I, it's um, it's more. I was actually looking to see if you wanted to add anything to the agenda, or if you also confirm that that's you're good with that, or is there anything else you want to make, you know, that you think we really should talk about with the board? Are we going to uh, revisit the uh, public engagement plan or around the housing? discussion because that that was part of our original discussion with them and that all kind of went by the wayside with the pandemic yeah i would suggest that we revisit what we talked about before including the things that we were committed to doing to see what we want to salvage or reimagine moving forward there's also the twist that we're now going to be updating the housing production plan um, which we weren't doing <laughs> this this year um, going into the next year. So there are things that are different, but we should do that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we need to figure out how to do the engagement we need um, remotely because uh, the the end of our current situation is uh, is not going to be soon. And um, and I'm 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 very conscious that our our housing issues continue to be a high priority for for a lot of people, and um, you know the longer the longer we're forced to wait to uh, address those issues, uh, it may add to the difficulty of finding solutions. I agree. Though I rec uh, though I recognize the difficulty of of doing the kind of um, uh, broad community engagement uh, that we had hoped to do uh, uh, when when Zoom is is uh, our primary tool at the moment. We've been using other mechanisms for participation for like the sustainable transportation plan and even net zero plan. So um, I think that there are some other things to brainstorm, but it it, it is basically remote and virtual and very hands off, obviously. Um, okay, I think I have everything I need though, Rachel. The only thing I was gonna just chime in with was whether or not there was anything, any topics, although they seem to be a little bit more tactical from the um, town's economic recovery task force that would be um, important for, I know that the select board has been very involved with supporting many of those efforts and then our board less specifically so, although again, supporting those who are uh, moving forward with development in the town in such a difficult economic time is something that is important to this board. So I'm, I'm just wondering if there are any topics related to what we're hearing from those business owners in town that we should add to the agenda as well. That's a great suggestion. I, I can definitely figure out uh, how we reference that in the meeting. Okay. Okay, that's all. Great, let's see. Uh, so the next item on our agenda is um, the open forum. So we will um, invite members of the public to um, to speak on on uh, a topic of their choosing, um, you have uh, please note that you have uh, three minutes. I think Jenny will be running the clock again. Um, we ask that you please state your name and your address for the record as you begin. So, if you are interested in speaking publicly at the meeting tonight in the open forum, if you could please use the raise hand function 
in the participant section of Zoom. I'll give it a minute. All right, seeing none, we will close the uh, public forum section of the meeting. Let's get back to my agenda here. And I think that concludes our agenda. So do we take a motion to adjourn? Well, I'd just to like adjourn. to say, uh, well, I'll second that, but I'll uh, also just say congratulations to Rachel and welcome to Catherine. Yes, welcome, Catherine, and thank you, David. Thank you. Good job tonight, Rachel. Thank you. I hope I didn't screw anything up, too. No, I have all the faith in you. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Do we have a second to adjourn? Yes. Great. So I'll run through the list here. Uh, Ken? Aye. Jean? Yes. David? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I'll say yes as well. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you, Bye -bye. everybody. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.